Yo, yo, yo. Hey, what is up, guys? We are here with the CPT World Warrior Midwest. This is number four, number three? Number, number four. four. Number four. We're in number four, baby. Uh, we've had yeah. the three, like, nonstop action, like, for every single month mm -hmm. leading up until this one. Uh, last one you guys saw us was streaming it live from Cream City uh, Convergence in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. We're back in our homes, uh, but... So are the players, so are the fighters, and we're going to yeah. be uh, casting it over to you. Uh, Mistopheles, thank you for yes. bringing it in. I'm Seth, and uh, Mistopheles, the last time you and I commentated together was way back in the day uh, yeah. on Salt Mine League and Street Fighter mm -hmm. Five, and here we are the first time commentating a new title together. So, yes. I mean, it's it's been great. Like, how's your uh, Street Fighter Six career been? We'll do like a quick, you know, catching up because sure, you know, yeah, of course, <laughs> yes, yes. It's it's been good. It, it, a little bit of like ups and downs. Things have been a bit weird. You know, everybody who's watching, I'm sure you guys have seen on Twitter the trials and tribulations of trying to switch from one game to the new game, and I'm I'm struggling a bit, but I do I do like the game a lot. I, I like watching it. I like playing it. Um, and I, I think the future is only going to get brighter. And uh, that being said, you know, the future that we are working towards right now, again, to remind everybody, this is to try and qualify at Capcom Cup 10 for the player shot at over a million dollars. I didn't stutter. You didn't mishear me. Over a million dollars, easily far and away the largest prize pool that has ever been presented for a fighting game. And uh, you know, you guys have seen time and time again, week in, week out at these premieres, at the online events, at the weeklies, players are grinding. I swear it's like Knuckle Dew enters three tournaments a day. He wins two of them at least. You know, we're seeing the same from Punk. We're seeing the same from Duel Kevin. The household names that you come to expect, they're putting in that work because they want that shot at life changing money. Yeah. Definitely is life changing money, and I mean, speaking of dual Kevin, that's who we've got first mm -hmm. up on our uh, on our matches for today. We've got Cien and dual Kevin. Cien actually just coming back from uh, CPT Singapore. You know, he flew right back. You know, probably yeah. rested up, shook off the jet lag, and is already mm -hmm. ready to get in there uh, as we get into our first set of the day. Cien versus dual Kevin. Uh, you guys probably watched dual Kevin earlier this week on SFL US. Mm -hmm. uh, repping Team UIU. It's going to be the standard DJ versus Luke. And these are two characters that have been getting a lot of conversation earlier this week. What huge damage to like lead off. And that's basically the topic of that conversation. Oh yeah, the, the damage and also that particular move that he has used to start that sequence time and time again, it's that low sway. It's like, oh, you tried to take your turn back? Well, eat this 60% and you just lost the game, my friend. You yeah. better keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, this damage is already massive. Look at that. We basically went from corner to corner in one and two answer actions. CN still has a good amount of meter to be able to fight his way out of this, but Kevin, life lead, and is Luke. You know, a lot of advancing normals, a lot of lockdown clipped. tools. Yeah, he did get clips. All right, the meter's coming back. Oh, oh, my gosh, a whole bunch of spaghetti, and I think... It kind of looked like it all started with a missed punish on that DP. There was just like kind of a weird situation. He didn't really know what to do. And uh, that was an opportunity for him to make a comeback because we all know DJ hits like a damn truck. Yeah, nice punish coming out from Duel Kevin and the first EX OD up kicks to come out from Cien. Yeah, it's, it's a really tricky movement that DJ has. You know, he's got the sway, the just cool mm -hmm. sway, just cool into low. Obviously, a super fast drive rush. Uh, and conversions from basically any kind of hit that he can land uh, to put yeah. you where he wants and then and then Oki afterwards so a character that's all about control despite however of a defensive play style is but Luke already He's throwing dead. out the magic button right there and this is definitely dead into level three Yep, Memphis that's the easy into game one, dude. <laughs> yeah, easy peasy combo to close it out there for Duel Kevin, and that's like that's one of Luke's big strengths, right? It's like you could talk about his laundry list of pros, but one of the biggest strengths for him is like his ability to convert into such big damage because like with with the access to the perfect knuckles with the access to like a level three you know he's got arguably the best arsenal of supers in the game he's only one hit away from doing no less than 40 percent at any given moment so when you've right. got all that meter stocked up and the level three it's like you can basically kiss this round goodbye and you better start planning for the next one yeah i mean you definitely get the same you got the same culprit on the other side of the screen too right mm -hmm. dj can turn most hits into about 40 to 50 percent minimum right yeah uh and it's it's just something that both characters are going to have to be conscious about in, in trying to play footsies or trying to just overwhelm the other with block strings and with pressure. Look at this. Oh. I love the way that Duel Kevin is really ready with those perfect parries and already ready to close that gap with the crouch medium punch. Ooh! Side just switch. outside of range. Nope. What a whiff punish. 
God damn, and look at the damage there on that heavy machine gun upper. And he doesn't get, oh, he was not ready to check that short yeah, hop. He didn't have no the anti-air on deck. Look at that, that's the third time. That's the third time Jewel Kevin hit the perfect mm -hmm. parry from the boom to drive in. Right. Oh, oh my jump. god. That's Bro. dead for sure. What a, a well-timed jump. CN just getting kind of trigger happy with those booms. Yeah, and you know, is Booms, I think, you know. I, yeah, I do think uh, Luke is a character that can kind of lull you into that false sense of security because of how his fireballs work. You get, you know, kind of a little bit ahead of yourself. You know, you're stopping them before they come out because of like how the essentially hit scan works. It doesn't have travel time. So you feel like you're getting ahead of things. And then like next thing you know, he moves in just a little bit, gets the jump, and then he's punishing you big time. And right now we see Duel Kevin has all this control. Mm hmm. He's like yeah. got him into the corner there, and uh, Shen Chang is just trying to get himself out. And Duel Kevin is playing cool, calm, and collected. We've seen this in his Marvel play, in his Street Fighter Five days, and now in Street Fighter Six, he's, he's just at home. Yeah, super dead. Jesus, wow. what a two zero so far from mm -hmm. Luke or from Duel Kevin. But you know, it's top eight. CPT yeah. rules apply here, so we're doing a first to three, but what a very quick two games straight coming out from Duel Kevin. And you can tell that he's leveled up by a lot. Uh, Duel Kevin so far sitting at third in the points mm -hmm. for it, um, but Sien sitting at second, you know, who's competed so far in all of the World Warriors so far. Um, you know, they both have been fighting back to back uh, for their points, but Duel yeah. Kevin really leveling up over the course of this last few weeks. Well, yeah, again, we do have to remember he is coming fresh off of, you know, training with some of the best in the world week in and week out in Street Fighter League. So I'm sure he is feeling, you know, juice to the gills to really try his hand and, like, prove that he's leveled up, right? And he's doing a great job right now. Caught him walking back. That low. Now he's got him in the corner. And this is where Dual Kevin has been showing really strong. He does not let him out of that corner. Oh, wow. Punish counter on oh, that this throw. This is such a huge opportunity, but Duel Kevin finds the right time to mash, and now we're chilling out a little bit, giving him a little bit of space is Shen Chang, but he does clip him. Still a pixel, and absolutely, look at the uh, the bar on his side, perfect parry! Oh, this is so huge, he gets max damage too, gets the side switch, this is such an optimal conversion here. Is he going to bring it back? All he has to do is get that drive impact, it's gotta yeah. come sometime, right? He's just got to be super careful about the level one getting buffered. Now he just, he knows he's had to back off. Oh and there it is, the, you, the OD Sandblast. Just a chip away, blaster, whatever that Sien wants to fight out with. And here we go, set point now for Duel Kevin. Oh man, immediately shutting down that approach. You do not get your offense for free. It might be a jump scare to some, but he is eyes wide open, peeled and ready to stop that in its tracks. Yeah, Duel Kevin, you can tell that he's been labbing specifically mm -hmm. against DJ. And I mean, sure. for good reason, this character has been getting on a lot of players nerves for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. Uh, you know, kind of the topic of the conversation for Street Fighter lately, a lot of people, dude, what a conversion to close it out. Three games straight, Duel Kevin showing just well how well studied he is for this matchup. And man, it, it it's like, when you need to understand how to beat your opponent, you probably just like run the set, do all the homework, yeah. do all the research, and it can you can really see how Duel Kevin was prepared for that. Perfect pairs on every single thing, mm -hmm. you know, did not like balk at the knees kind of going up and down. So, uh, you know, the, the, the drop knee that yeah. DJ wants to do didn't overextend on trying to mm -hmm. anti ear or check that. And Duel Kevin just seemingly prepared for every single thing that CN wanted to do. Dude, I mean, like, if you are coming in from Street Fighter V, I'll, most of that talent, uh, outside of, like, the very top, right? Like, mm -hmm. tournament winners were, like, really consistent winners. It's been shaken up right below yeah. that. So, obviously, you still have Punk. You still have uh, Angry, the Birds. You know, you mm -hmm. still have Mena and the DR scene. But everything below that, and that's kind of what the whole point of World Warrior is, we're going to see Kung Fu Hustle. We're going to see Flash Metroid. And we're going to see a lot of newer names or names that weren't, really popping up a lot in the early or later parts of street fighter 5 yeah. come a lot in the early parts of street fighter 6 so really nice to see uh names like cn chang come back who mm -hmm. we haven't really seen since uh since uh street fighter uh what is it street fighter 4 right yeah so mm -hmm. it's uh really cool to see those names flash metroid we've been seeing their success throughout multiple titles especially in guilty gear strive but kung fu hustle a name that i didn't see a lot and now we're really showing up just how successful this player can be because we already got Flash Metroid locked down in the corner.
Yeah, he does have a little bit of life leader. Oh, he's actually has managed to sneak out the Blanca Chandal. Now, is he actually going to get the room out of there? There it is. It's primed and ready. It's coming. It's not going to stop until nice. you block it. He does force a burnout, though. But oh. that is something. Blanca is a character, I, you know, he's got a number of strengths that we could talk about. But I think one that kind of goes under the radar is how well he fights out of burnout compared to some characters. Yeah. Yeah, Blanca, I mean... There's so many things about this character that are just not dependent on drive, right? So, mm -hmm. best super two in the game. Um, I think most people will probably agree. yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was incredible corner pressure uh, off of a single knockdown. As long as he's able to set up that ball, it just becomes incredibly scary for mm -hmm. you. Even just off of this throw, like look um, at this already into level two. Speak of the devil, didn't even need it. As a punish counter throw is going to do it. It seems according to you guys, I'm going to take your word for it. If it's still messed up, it's on you, chat that uh, everything is sorted out now. So please, let's get into this next match. Again, it is Kung Fu Hustle versus none other than Flash Metroid. Let's see who takes this next one. Mm -hmm. oh, he gets clipped. He's yeah. trying to uh, trying to get the Blanca Chan out and you can't do that against a character like Jury. That far reaching uh, crouch medium kick is so good. And then you couple that with the drive rush and that's a recipe for disaster if you're caught with your pants down. Ooh, good whiff punish coming out from Kung Fu, and this should be dead. Mm -mm. Yeah. Combo into level one? No. Yeah, there I, we go. I don't think so. I think it's going to scale too much. Oh, okay. It's going to scale right. too much. This All guy. right. I was close. I'm, <laughs> I'm betting that it was close. I would like to see the numbers, but fair enough. <laughs> Jerry's forward dash goes so far, able to catch the tail end of the jump back for the DP. And now we're seeing Flash Ooh. Metroid play a lot more reserve, a little bit yeah. more defensively. I think just trying to out footsies Kong Fu. Which is essentially the only way. Uh, when Cherry has a Fuha stock and she throws out that fireball, yeah, it's a, that's the ignorant button. But other than that, you're really forced to play footsies. Yeah. And yeah, he's been able to slow things down here well. And I think somebody of Flash's caliber, you know, he is a fighting game veteran for almost 20 years now. Uh, he is able to kind of switch on a dime. Because like you were talking about, he's really switched gears. He's shifted down. Ooh, he's nice. taking a much more controlled measure at this point. And uh, that's something that I think the onus of adapting is going to be on Kung Fu Hustle. Oh, oh you're dead. Man. Dead. For sure dead. All right. Now, what we saw there from Kung Fu Hustle is that he, he wasn't really able to wrangle in this slower play style. So he was overextending in ways that uh, Flash Metroid was ready for. So with that being said, he's already starting off a little more aggressive, but now he's slowing things down a little bit. And he's willing to play kind of this patient game and it might pay off for him. We'll see. Oh, almost got clipped with the up back EX ball. Oh, what an interesting time to ch challenge with us, Dan Roundhouse. Okay, there's the slide off of the launcher. Oh, he tried to go for a oh, throw no. bait. No such luck. Parries it, but now he gets himself out of the corner. Okay. Playing it kind of dangerous, but playing very patiently, both of these guys. All right, up balls out. Yeah. Oh, man, he's been he's really been putting in work with that dash into the DP. And I do think that's something that is really beneficial for a jury. Okay, this is a big expenditure. Now, it's going to do an okay amount of damage, but the most important thing here for Kung Fu Hustle is getting back that drive gauge. As you can see, he's already going to be up over three bars, and he's working on getting back to that fourth. Oh, that's this is not enough to kill my enemy. <laughs> oh, yeah? What's that, Seth? Huh? Okay, my bad. We're tied now. It's one for one. Okay, my bad. <laughs> You're right, dude. You're so right. <laughs> um, nice little little trade for us. <laughs> oh, big perfect parry. There it is. The heavy Fuha goes for the safe jump. Wasn't able to bait out with an up ball though. And man, that buffer on the stand medium punch is such a strong tool for Blanca now. Now that it's cancelable. Here. Oh, what a nice. Caught that with punish. Okay, got his back to the wall, but man, that up back into the dive kick is so strong for Blanca. I frankly can't believe they gave him that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's it might be a problem. I mean, a lot of Blanca's tools are <laughs> tough in this game. He sure is a good fighting game character. All right, now again, slowing things down. And now the thing is, it's like Kung Fu Hustle has been going to that parry a lot, right? You know, you can't let uh, Blanca just whittle away at your drive gauge on block. But we see that uh, Flash Metroid really isn't like 
I don't know, not trying to uh, not trying to take too much advantage of it. He's willing to let it happen. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for Kung Fu Hustle to kind of plan around it. Oof. That's EX. Ball to get out. Okay. A ball. Look at that. This is really tough. Wow. Is that a hit confirm or just kind of buffered into it no matter what? And look at the core and the Blanca Chan's coming still. And with burnout, this is basically GG's. He can just chip. Yep. Yeah, the only other way out really was uh, just buffer level three mm -hmm. in order to survive. But yeah, no way out, essentially. So they're backing off. They're trying to catch him off guard, but there was no uh, ball, uh, horizontal ball in from Blanca to try and gain the space. Now there it is, a huge punish. It's just a miscalculation on the spacing there from Flash Metroid and uh, Kung Fu Hustle took advantage of it. And now again, that dash up DP putting in so much work, really like the, the MVP of the corner carry in this matchup. Oh, but the side switch from him is oh, so good. Flash Metroid ready to take advantage of that to the fullest. Again. Wow. This is almost dead. Damn, Damn that's a lot of damage. Close. So close. Okay. Answer their way out, but ended up getting caught with the low. All right, Flash one round away. Is he gonna be able to close this out with a quick 3-1? We're hoping that Kung Fu Hustle can slow things down a little bit, get more control, and actually pull this out. It's gonna be a tough order though. Lock. Oh, oh he based it out. This is so dangerous now. Caught low, dead. Nice. Very yes. Nice. That was so, so, so important. A little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of momentum on his side. Some inertia behind him to try and swing the pendulum back. Okay, whoa. Level three. All right, nice. Okay. Should be caught up. All right. Oh man, a huge combo there. Now a throw will only kill in a punish counter oh, situation. Oh, the dash in the corner. That's so good. He expected Super the parry. Good. Oh, he didn't have the conversion. And he baits it out anyways. And just like that, Kung Fu Hustle with a little bit of luck on his side is able to steal that away. And now we're tied up at two apiece. This is not what Flash wants. He doesn't want to go to a game three. No, I'm pretty sure that. Or game five, I should. Game five, effectively. Yeah, you're right. But I'm pretty sure that Blanca still can like rack up those layers to make things really uncertain for kung fu sure but you know a game five situation wouldn't really be scary but you know kung fu is just not getting a lot of mileage out of the blanca balls mm -hmm. oh man he gets clipped it's a good chunk of damage too because it was counter hit okay and we're really seeing a lot of movement out of flash metroid he's playing the very evasive and pretty erratic so you can tell that he's maybe trying to get kung fu hustle to bait out like a parry and you know maybe overextend with the DP when he doesn't need to. He's playing really tricky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we're gonna kind of expect from the number one ranked person for the Midwest right now. A nice jump back, OD dive ball again. Mm -hmm. It just catches everyone every time. I want to say. Yeah, it's like it's really hard not to, right? Yeah, it's hard to be prepared for. Okay, Kong. Nice drive in. Oh, yeah, third time? Three for three. Come oh, on. Flash there's, oh, dude, yeah, it's like almost guaranteed. Oh wow, my gosh. Okay, this is huge. There it what? is into the level two. That's so much damage. Yeah. But the setup is what matters. Is he oh, dead? I think I'm he's counting dead. that one, dude. I'm counting that. Four for four. Okay, there we go. Finally got one. It actually gets punished for it. And this is huge for him because he has him in burnout. And it's now the level be... two is run out. Oh, oh no! no! The slide to wow. do it! Flash Metroid was just so ready. Three, two. What a really, what a, what a turnaround for game five coming out from Flash Metroid. Man, that was, that was so unfortunate for Kong yeah. Fu Hustle to just whiff that DP. Oh man. Yeah, and you know, that's, that's something that can happen, right? It's like, especially a character like Blanca, who is so good at altering his movement, whether it's a jump trajectory, whether it's hopping through you, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, uh, doing a, a, a Blanca ball short or whatever it is, he's got ways to deceive you. And if yeah. you're playing in a really reactive way, next thing you know, you know, he's doing it over your head, short, whatever it is, jumping through you, and you're just 
caught out in the open whiffing a dp and it's right for your life you know it's yeah. like it couldn't have been a worse situation but mm -hmm. i really i really respect the resilience from kung fu hustle the adaptation that he made there in that fourth game and then even coming back in the fifth game he was working on stealing that round after flash was in burnout it just made a mistake and flash was ready to capitalize yeah, the CA was there, you know, if, if he was more ready for the side switch situation after that, uh, if he hadn't whiffed that DP, I'm almost positive that it was going to be a combo mm -hmm. into CA to be able to close it out, final game, final round situation, but that's just not really how that worked out. So, uh, but that's our, that's it with our winner's side. Thankfully we yeah. had a game five as opposed to the first set of the day being a quick 3-0 from Duel <laughs> Kevin. So those two are now going to meet over in the winner's final and then we're going to switch mm -hmm. over to the loser's side. Uh, with Jewel Man El Chicote and then Shine versus Joey. Hey, and welcome back, guys. Again, we need to remind you that we do have another World Warrior event coming up. You can see right there, November 11th. Uh, you can join us to make sure that you can try and get your points and earn your spot in the finals to try and punch your ticket for CPT uh, finals there, Capcom Cup 10. Again, if you want to figure out where you're going to sign up for that, at, it is start.gg slash SF6 Midwest. Um, again, from there, you can make sure you sign up. Make sure you get it out of the way. Don't want to forget about it. And of course, there is the rest of the schedule. We've got one more there on November 11th. And then the finals, which is, again, uh, secured by getting your seeding points, making sure you're in that top eight qualifier, winners or losers side, and you will play for your spot at Capcom Cup. And that's going to be on November 18th. So again, start.gg slash SF6 Midwest for all the information on how you're supposed to sign up. All right, and then of course, uh, from there, you can keep your eyes on the FGC meetups that are located in Skokie at the Ignite Gaming Lounge. Um, you can use either the QR code there on the left or start.gg slash FGC meetups. And you can see we have a brevy of games for you to get to. There is Street Fighter 6, Mortal Kombat 1, KOF 15, Guilty Gear Strive, and Tek Tekken 7, excuse me. Um, $5 bracket fee, uh, of course, going to be streamed on Low Kick Esports there. Um, and there are other games too. It's not just what you see on the screen. You know, they're willing to work with you to run side tournaments, etc., all that stuff. So if you want to play fighting games, that's and you are in the Skokie area, that's where you should be. And of course, the new iteration from the Midwest's best regional event, Roundhouse, is going to be Roundhouse Tag. As you can see, April 12th to 14th is the first ever Roundhouse Tag. Low Kick Esports and Ignite Gaming bring you a series of singles, doubles and team crew battle tournaments over three days. Registration will be launching January 1st in 2024. Keep your eyes open for which formats, games, and impromptu events will be happening again in, in Skokie, Illinois this April. And let me tell you guys, if you haven't been there, um, the Ignite Gaming Lounge is fantastic. Skokie has a bunch of great restaurants around, very cozy part of the city. Um, you don't want to miss out. It's like, if you like Combo Breaker, you should be going to this too. Please, check it out. You won't, you won't uh, regret it. Thank you. Thank you for the plug. Yeah, of course. Of <laughs> Did a lot to up talk an event that, uh, you know, that I couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited for Tag. There's just it's gonna be sick. so much cool stuff that we got. But, you know, I'm also excited for the rest of the World Warrior for today. The, mm -hmm. We've got, you know, nobody's out just yet. Uh, we are now transitioning over to the loser side, so we're now going to see some eliminations. Um, we've got Chakotay versus Jewel Man, our first ones up. Uh, a couple of, you know, two similar enough characters, I would want to say. Chakotay has been a Lily Loyalist, essentially, since yeah. the game has dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, probably one of the best play Lily players that are out there. For sure. Um, and honestly, probably both of these characters contender for like bottom two, bottom three? Well, prior to Aki. But I'd still maybe. put Lily yeah. bottom for me. Um, maybe, I don't know, it's it's hard to say. I, I think outside of like the top tier characters, it's kind of uh, not as clear cut as people would think. But right now we are seeing these two players really slug it out. And I think slugging it out is how both these characters play. You know, they've, they've got their special moves that are like forward advancing or kind of an uppercut. And it's like, it's all about getting them to the corner and setting up just like that, that command grab. And if we have seen anything from Shakote over his time playing the fight, uh, Street Fighter series, he loves command grab characters. He's the master of mix. Master of mix is right. Oh man, nice. Okay, nice. For busting through the DI. Mm -hmm. All right, first round goes to Chakote. Oh, I like that attempt there. Trying to catch him off guard, Jewel Man. Stopping short, going into the uh, the OD um, 
like sumo stance. I'm not. I can't remember exactly what that means. Called you up to forgive me, chat. But I like the attempt. Didn't quite work out, but man, he's getting a lot of mileage now. And we see Chakote forcing him to unhand him, get off me, give me some space, waking up with that level one. That's what Lily needs because she doesn't have a traditional reversal. Oh, the overhead. Nice. This is probably going to go into level two. No, just go for the knockdown. Wants to save some of that meter to ensure that it close it out. Oh, but the burnout now. This is bad. Dangerous. This is so yep. bad. But buffering like crazy. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, that's going to be enough damage to do it. Chakote taking game one in this set. And I have to say, I think that is why we did not see that level 2 at the end of the combo. He knew it wasn't going to kill, and he recognized how low he was on Drive Gauge. He was using that as an insurance policy, and it paid off. Oh man, I'm wondering what Jewelman is pressing on Wake Up. And wow, that punish counter throw did so much damage. Yeah, EX good. headbutt to get out. But is it going to do you any good? Look at this life lead that Chakotay is just continuing to accumulate. Bam! All the life lead right now. Let's take a quick round. Man, this is three rounds straight in about a minute and a half. Chakotay right now is kind of speed running this. Jewel Man is really going to have to slow it down. He, he's not doing well enough to, like, he's not doing well enough to impose his own will. Uh, Chakotay is really, really comfortable right now, and you can't play a match like that. Oop. Once again, the command grab. Yeah, this is really tough. Mm -hmm. Tougher Jewel Man. Locking it down, we're seeing him trying to walk in and out of ranges, but he's definitely not charging ahead. headbutt, so now, Chakotay, no worries, we're going in, into the level three. Mm-hmm, yes sir, wrap it up, that's two games in about two minutes. Chakotay really working on getting his spot further in the bracket, he wants to get more of those points. And, like I said, Jewelman has to figure out a way to actually like get more damage. He's playing this kind of slow plotting style with Honda, which I think can work, but if you're not getting any any hits, you know, Honda hits really hard. If you're not landing any of those hits, it's like, why does your opponent have to care? Right. Oh man, here we go <laughs> yet again into the vortex. Uh -oh. Yeah, see, it, every single okay. time, nice backdash in the corner, finally saves himself from okay. breathing room. What a, the Honda shimmy, the big boy shimmy right there. And I love that usage of the super, guaranteeing that he can get the burnout here. Now you have to go for a setup, but he's got to be careful. He burned himself out? I do not agree. Spending a lot of meter. Oh, didn't burn himself out. Oh, Ooh, nice. The clap to close it. Yeah, I, it looked like he was spending a lot of meter there to be able to close it out, but just enough to make himself alive. Oh, the sumo slam. And here we go. Are we seeing a momentum shift here? Because now Jewel Man really turning it up. Just outside of a range for a headbutt. Kote, oh, prepared, but the punish counter on the hands. Damn, look at the damage, and look at the drive gauge. The drive gauge is so low for Chakotay there, and he's actually gonna get the kill. Just like that. Jewel Man stealing it back, and now a little bit of wind is in his sails. Can he actually turn the tide here, get it around, and sail off the victory? Look at the damage! Honda hits oh so God, hard. Damage. Oh my gosh, what a buffer there. Okay, not quite out of drive gauge yet. He does bait that out. And now this is a huge opportunity for Chakotay. He's able to get the burnout there on Jewel Man and more importantly has the corner position. Now he can hopefully ensure a drive impact. There it is, the stun. He was not ready. He can't kill off of this though. What? Did... I don't know. He... I don't it's know. hard to tell if that was purposeful or not. Oh my gosh. And just the OD headbutt. Ain't it right back too. at you. And you're dead. Yeah, that's dead. Nice. That's a level two. Oh no, that's a level one, the Breezing Hawk. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what's it gonna be Pardon here? Okay. Blocks it out there, not quite in range there to get a counter poke. Oh, oh man, he jumping, didn't but... believe. Yeah. yeah, he didn't believe in it, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, I like that. Taking the opportunity to get the, uh, get the V skill store to power up the hands a bit. Oh man, I like the jump attempt from Chicote, but he is able to get a, an errant hit, clips him, and now has the corner position here and a little bit of a life lead. Yeah, see, oh, I like this. respecting the drive rush Oki when it's that close, but from far range, it's just not been able to respect it. With punish. Oh man. Oh, oh and there it man. is. And you know, we have to talk about this, right? So Chakotay wins 3-1. It was honestly a very good set from Jewel Man. He was like, there were a couple of these moments where had he like had more confidence and believed in his uh, jump in attempt, he could have yeah. converted that into 30, 40% and maybe taken the round. But we have to talk about hearkening back to that second game. There were probably three, maybe four instances where Jewel Man correctly read 
that Chakotay was going to go for those command grab mix-ups. He ju neutral jumped them, got a huge punish, able to really dissuade him from going for that again. But Chakotay is the kind of player that he understands. He's keeping that in his brain. He's like, okay, you feel like things have uh, swung into your favor. You have shifted the confidence and you feel like you've got a read on me now. I'm going to let off the gas just a little bit until this last run when it matters most. And he catches him with this really sneaky reset and is able to close the game out before Jewel Man even expected to lose. I, I really respect that strategy and that kind of like three steps ahead chess that Chakotay was playing. Great stuff from him. Yeah, insanely good stuff from uh, from Chakotay. And I mean, you know, Lily Loyalist, as we pointed out in the beginning, um, just seemingly prepared for every single kind of matchup that Lily's going to have to play against. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, want, I pointed out a little bit earlier that they're relatively similar characters. You know, you said that Chakotay is just a grappler main in general, mm -hmm. so already kind of in the mindset. And the defense has to be pristine in order to succeed yes. against a character like Honda and, you know, a, a, a character like Lily who, you know, once she, until she's turning up the heat, like with her Condor Spires, she really does have to kind of sit tight, play footsies, yeah. you know, be very, very reserved and turtle up uh, up until she gets that hit and, and starts to go in. So, you know, good stuff to Chakotay for being as mm -hmm. prepared as he is. We're going to get into our next set, though, Shine versus Joey. And I got to get Shine in this. I think it's Shine NYC. So, yeah, talking about it, um, Shine actually just coming off of a huge win at ECT. Freshly unsponsored, by the way. So if there are any people that, you know, are kind of working in partnerships with esports teams or whatever, if you want somebody that is going to be a consistent, strong representative, and also just like an upstanding guy, he's like one of the best dudes in the community, like drama free, isn't really a jerk, you know, very friendly guy, and just also a super strong competitor, shines your guy. Coming off of this big win at ECT, um, and routinely places like basically top like five in any tournament in the US. If he travels there, he's going to do well. Um, and recently also finding a bit, I don't know if I would necessarily say a new main, but uh, he is putting the time into a character in Chun-Li, which a lot of people are kind of torn on. Uh, you know, we hear people talk about Luke. We hear, we hear people talk about DJ, talk about Guile, Ken, JP, right? You know, these, these, uh, aggressive, you know, incredibly strong, perhaps oppressive characters. But mm -hmm. Chun-Li is one that kind of sneaks under the radar. Unless you're, like, in the know, a lot of people don't talk about her in that same regard. And uh, we've really seen Shine get incredible success with her. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that Chun-Li is a character that does have answers for everything, which is kind of mm -hmm. what the characters up at the top, um, you know, that's why they're at the top, you know, yeah, they, can, sure. they can land a hit from any range, uh, and then convert into something big. They have a really good, okay. They've got mix up options. You know, they, they have answers to every single matchup and chun -Li kind of falls in that where she doesn't really have too many losing matchups necessarily. Yeah. Like chun -Li kind I of succeeds agree. in every way. And really the only way that she does fall flat. And the only thing that probably keeps her from being like right at the top is the fact that, you know, in the in the mid range, like what we'll say, for example, stand heavy range, right? Mm -hmm. Stand heavy range, it's not a really an optimal. If stand heavy punch was what she used to have, sure. I think that she would be top tier. And also the fact for that sure. Kikoken, her fireball, you know, a, a, you know, the tool that allows her to kind of just like skip the neutral, the fact that it's a charge and the fact that she has to like do it from a position outside of a, like she can't be yeah. aggressive with it mm -hmm. um, preemptively, like that's the only thing that probably keeps her from sure. falling short. Other than that, she has insanely good mix, like left, right, high, low. Mm -hmm. um, she has incredibly good safe jump and Oki options. Mm -hmm. You know, she can she can turn hits into you know massively advantageous uh, situations for yeah. herself. I think that it's just because the the fact that she has the charge fireball and the fact that um, you know playing at that stand heavy punch range, that mid range, mm -hmm. uh, is not that's like her weak spot, right? Like right outside. Sure. That. Whereas other characters like. They feel fine in that, you know, other characters mm -hmm. in the top tiers, I would say. Yeah, I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. It, it is an interesting perspective where, like, Stand Heavy Punch is still a very, very strong button, right? Like, it doesn't matter what Street Fighter game it, it is, it's always going to be good. But, is it? You can, is you it can, good in this game? I mean, is it? Oh, 100% it's still it's good. Not it's not you can just whiff, Yeah, you can just whiff punish it now. But it's still incredibly strong. There, there's no denying that. Um, well, it's it's like it is strong in the sense that like you can whiff punish it. That makes it where Chun has to use her brain now to mm -hmm. use that button. Um, and you can hit confirm it in the sense where you're like, if you throw that out, 
you can buffer the stance in order for you to actually right. like, get a conversion. But you know, if you're if you're buffering into stance, you're not going to get anything. You know, you're actually just going to get punished for going into stance. So Chun Li has to be extremely selective about the way that she uses it. But no, we're seeing Shine yeah. instead of using the character that he want East Coast Throwdown with. We're seeing the Kimberly, which I love. I love this character. I actually really She's enjoy so cool. both of these characters, but Kimberly is so cool. Mano, uh, kind of a character that fits really well in Joey's hands, and I, I feel yeah. fits really well in Mika player's hands. She's a character mm. that, you know, at a certain range, it's it's a 50-50, just just by standing there. You know, yeah. she has the she has the, the greed sever, essentially, mm. <laughs> um, where it's just like a, a instant low, and then she also has that overhead. Uh, and then she has her drive rush, and then the moment you see her flash green, it's very scary, but look at the amount of damage oh, that you're dead. Joey has just thrown on immediately. Yep. Three medals going into round one. Yeah, that's a great place to start off with. Um, you know, that, that is kind of her gimmick as a character, right? You know, she builds these metals that make her stronger, do more damage, um, gives her a better combo potential, um, makes her drive impact actually a bit better as it increases. But right now we see Shine isn't even given the chance to breathe. But that parry there into the defensive back, there was such a huge opportunity for Joey to take control of this match and have it be 2-0 in his favor. Shine is going to have to fight his way out, try to get back to that mid-screen, and there's a huge punish oh, opportunity. Huge punish. Okay, very nice. Yeah, we were seeing Shine start to bait out, you know, the anti-air attempts with the with the elbow drop. Mm -hmm. But now Shine in an insanely good position. This is actually dead. Yeah. This has to be dead. Yeah, for sure dead, even with like the lower damage output. Um, you know, level threes do not scale below 50%. Um, but we do have to touch on the fact that Kimberly's gimmick is that after you activate the level three, you see that uh, that equalizer halo around her head. You know, she's vibing to the music. She is now faster and stronger. So this means that suddenly this character that was already hard to react to, hard to keep pinned down, gets to be even more of a menace and do more damage because of it. All right, Joey able to get that counter hit conversion here with the corner control, but we see Shine not really hesitating. He's doing a lot of these kind of erratic movements, trying to really be off kilter. So he, Joey doesn't get to, you know, get the drive impact. He doesn't get to drive rush into the command grab. He's making it harder for him to pin him down and actually close this round out, which is something I think Kimberly really thrives on. She's a very cha chaotic character. Yeah, she's a pretty chaotic character just in the sense of the way that she approaches. But wow, into the level three. Super nice from Joey. What a game one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, going into game two, it felt as though that final round was just so rough for Shine. He could not find hits that he needed, uh, constantly on defense. And that's just not what Kimberly wants to be doing, right? Kimberly is trying to knock you down once, apply mm -hmm. the mixture and over and over, get you to the corner even potentially. Um, but Joey has just been a wall, a fortress. And look at this, now it advancing a wall moving forward, an unstoppable force. Nice, right. perfect parry. We're gonna yeah. get that side switch off the target combo. So important here. Now Shine really has to make this count. Now we do have to remind everybody that in, oh no, that was a miss input. He did not mean to do that. I think it was supposed to maybe be stand medium kick and just got a miss input. Um, but he's not quite out of the woods yet. He is able to get a big punish here, put him into the corner and he gets to apply more mix. Okay, nice, and off of the target, or off of the bomb, but doesn't spend too much off of it. Man, that that's buffered, still dead. yeah, that buffered uh, jab from Joey. They're just recognizing that it was—he was either going to go for maybe a shimmy attempt, or he was going to go for the smoke screen, the the uh, the smoke bomb like mix. It, uh, these two have played once or twice. Now that's the way I'll put it. You know, he's oh, yeah. he's a couple a couple Yomi layers deep to understand Ooh. how Shine wanted to try and apply offensive pressure. Yeah, I really like that meaty crouch fierce from Shine. Uh, but here we go, back into the mid screen. Level and threes got, are available for both of them. And he's got four medals, man. Voltron is almost assembled. Joey is uh, in a really, really good spot. Shine has to be careful. Yeah, Shine, you see that playing a little bit far. Oh, but no, <laughs> the classic Kimberly impatience. You know, pop the smoke. Next oh, hit confirm scary. is absolutely going to spell the end of the round for Joey. So Shine has to really like figure out how to weasel his way in and make these hit confirms count. Yeah, really nice stop sign, but the wake up level two, not gonna kill. But look at the drive gauge. Yeah, He's slowly whittling it down. Yeah, backing away as he needs to, but there it is. Oh no, oh, the whip punish. Oh, oh, block, really good block. You're dead. Nice. 
Very oh. nice. Has to spend that level three, unfortunately, but now it's it's, it's survival, right? Going into the final round. Yeah, that's I don't all know that's if, important. I don't know if there was like maybe a missed hit confirm from Joey, or maybe a missed input. I like that hit grab right where he got punished. I don't know what that was supposed to be, but it was really really costly for him. And wow. suddenly, Shine has a little more wind in his sails. Okay, nice. The elbow drop, getting something started for him. The bomb. Um, Yet again, getting caught with the throw. And here we right. go, the big conversion. All right, I'm just taking the damage into the Oki. Oh my gosh, and the meatiest Crouch Fears. Oh, he didn't no, believe in the shimmy. Okay, this is a huge opportunity. There's so much meter on Joey's side, and he's playing defensive, but he does get clipped. There's the defensive back throw. Oh, God. Oh, oh my no. God. He tried it all. Yeah, I tried to stop it short with the reset, but Shine just holding up back. Nice God, tech. The God, this is so tense. Stein is one hit away from being dead. He has to be so careful about how he pokes, about how he moves. He blocks it out, but it's safe. Yep. Okay, now it's out of the burnout now, so definitely alive. And now Joey's on the back foot. Oh! That was so, so sad. I think the, the crush between punch just leaned her forward a little bit to make him go behind. And then the whiff punish came in out, but... Man, it, it feels so bad to be sitting on four medals the entire round. Yeah. You know, you as a Manon player, that's just like, you, you can't scratch that itch. It feels really bad. All right. Slinky's things out a little bit. Both of them jockeying for position here in the mid-range. Able to drive rush in there into the crouching medium kick. Get a big punch and wants him all the way into the corner. Whoa. I love that optimization. Yeah, what a combo. That was super cool. Nice, Again. the stop sign, stand medium kick back into the corner. Oh, gets clipped. Okay, and Overhead didn't lead into anything, but did get uh, Joey a little bit of range out of the corner. Not going to go into the level one here. Goes for the can setup. Oh, that's oh, so cheap. Overhead. You're dead. This should be dead. Mm -hmm. Off the level two. Mm -hmm. Again, nice. Shine with the through? optimization. My man has done the homework. He's been in the lab. He knows how to squeeze every ounce of damage out of this character. And when you're playing a character that does have below average damage, you have to do that. You have to make it count. Yeah, I mean, Chan was, what, a Buki player in mm -hmm. Street Fighter V, right? So, definitely very familiar with this kind of, this caliber of mixture. And look at that, yet again, get that damage on the board. Another good Oki situation, but Joey blocking it this time. Oh, blocks okay, it out. Level two. And Harry, even parries. Oh, this is dead. Oh, yeah, super dead. Maximum so punish. Dead. Um, damn, didn't even have to spend any super. That's another one for Shine. That's two up for him in this first to three. He's in a good position to take this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Joey's still still not out, but oh man, that stand medium kick. It's just really shutting down Manon. Nice jab out from Joey. Oh, okay. This is huge. He's going to put him into burnout here. Now, what will he do? Yes, I love that. Get love a little bit of damage, switch. but yes, the side switch it is. And now look at this. Oh no, he lets him get out of the corner. Jumped out. Oh man. Oh, uh, missed the drive rush. Yeah. Oh, huge jump in. And look at the damage. One more command grab and he's dead. Oh, oh. my god, that clipped her? Oh, the neutral jump. <laughs> he's he's trying to escape the grabs now. He's doing the anti-grappler tech yeah. as the grappler. And how do you even be ready for that? I cannot believe that, that uh, the, the like OD ballerina kicks actually hit. That was crazy. It was. It was. Nice. All right, here we go. Four medals yet again. He's really... He's really scratching at his neck. He just wants this, the last hit, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh man, what a cross up there. Great opportunity from Shine to jump and get that punish. And now with the level three, he's gonna do a good amount of damage, take him down to about 50%. But more importantly, he's gonna have the drive gauge lead and this power up with the uh, yes. the, the music halo. Yeah, the, the movement speed buff is just super helpful in a matchup like this where you need to be stepping in and out and jostling mm -hmm. for a position like this. You know, look at, Look at how well he's able to just take space now. Or just like be exactly where he wants. Doesn't have to do anything. Okay. Just centering with the life lead, but still decides to go in and out. Oh man, and just caught him trying to poke at the wrong time there. Huge opportunity, oh. able to- Oh, he actually clipped him. Okay, does get the side switch here. This is a big chance for Joey to try and turn things oh, around here. And that is the God. start. The burnout's almost there. Oh my God, Joey! Shine just did not want to block in the situations. Really trying to avoid the grab, command grab reset, mm -hmm. holding up back, but actually just getting clipped by everything there. 
last game. This is for all the marbles. This is loser side, folks. Whoever doesn't make it past this game, they are out of the tournament, and they're going to be short on points going into that final. They want to secure their spot. Oh, nice. Good hit okay. confirmed there on the crouch medium punch. Nice. Damn! Meaty as hell. Not quite dead, but... Oh, there, there we go. That, my I'm oh sorry. My gosh. The, I should have kept my mouth shut. The punish counter on the recovery of the whiffed jump was so good. That's something you see actually happen a lot in this game. And I think, like, high-level players, that's one of their, like, specialties, right? You know, you recognize that from the certain angle, you can't really so... anti-air them. So you catch them on the way down. That was counter hit. Shine tried to interrupt that string, but nice jump out of that DI was not fast enough to be able to punish. But Shine ready. Now setting up the oh. bomb. Went up to try to, but was not ready for the air to air. Yo, dude, he's playing so well. Joey has really tapped in here and is thriving in this chaos. You can yeah. see Shine is trying to overwhelm him, but it's not paying off. Joey is like, like ready, but it's just a little bit of luck on his side too. Yeah, I mean, Shine for me playing like this. Oh my God. Coming off of his ECT win, he's about to be eliminated right now from World Warrior mm -hmm. Midwest number four. Look at that life lead. Look at, look at the life lead even more now. This is so scary. Wow, the regular grab to do it, the judo throw, throwing Joey over into the loser's quarterfinal and Shine out of this bracket. That I'm, it really looked like Shine was running away with it. He was applying such like, such heavy offensive pressure and against a character like monon like she has to make really hard reads to try and get out of it right like sure she has access to to drive reversal and she can parry but like because of the lack of a real reversal and like because of how her movement is it's really hard for her to like reel back and actually collect herself so with joey making some of these hard reads and able to get a little bit of a leg up defensively shine it seemed like he almost uh like kind of ran out of ideas and that's when joey was able to kind of run away with it yeah yeah i mean it was definitely like i think shine was just getting antsy in those mm -hmm. defensive situations because you know kimberly doesn't really have a conventional reversal either right so she's forced to have to either mash her way out or you know jump her way out in the grappler matchup not really trying to get you know overwhelmed in that regard mm -hmm. but you know shine uh in those situations oh let me let tay know that he is up next shine in those situations was just getting you know pretty pretty impatient on defense i think just 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 to put it sure. bluntly um a lot of time trying to just mash out a lot of ways trying to jump out not mm -hmm. enough of the parries uh you know perfect parries just because you don't want to deal with that punish counter throw yeah, understandably so and it was just a really scary situation to be in but you know now shine out of this bracket and uh we're we're we've got our losers corner finals matches up now which we're gonna get into so we got kung mm -hmm. fu hustle and el chakote which is up next and then jo joey moves on to fight Chen chan so uh man it's just been it's been a really scary day so far for this kind of an upset yeah all all gas no breaks you know very very high octane uh matches and uh, you know something that i think is uh interesting from a competitive standpoint is like how fast you're able to like get in and play the game um like it's it's non-stop even for the competitors like it's so easy it can literally take barely a full second for you to end a game and restart the next and so i do think you actually have to like you either need to like be kind of trained for that uh like immediate um like immediate being like thrust back into the action or you do need to take a moment to like breathe. And we haven't seen that from any of our competitors actually. They've all been right back into it. So I have to wonder the deeper we get in the bracket, maybe somebody will take a breather. But right now we are getting into, again, loser semifinals. It is Kung Fu Hustle versus El Chicote, a matchup we don't see very often between Lily and Jury. Yeah, no, this is definitely a set that I want to see. You know, I, I, I just, I mean, I like seeing Tay succeed, especially mm -hmm. on this character. You know, yeah. one of one of like the underdogs of the cast, um, but Kung Fu Hustle has just been a tear in all of our World Warrior brackets so far. So this is going to be really interesting. What a catch and a conversion. And now the command grab, the momentum from Tay here. And oh, I man. love that. The reticence, the patience from Tay Kung coming Fu out. Hustle willing to burn himself out. Yeah, that was all guaranteed. Unless he did level one there, which like Tay was willing to take, right? So now he's able to actually almost guarantee, but he drops the combo here. And now oh, when dead. you're in, okay, yes, the level one able to seal it. It's a little scary there for a second, but he's chilling. 
Yeah, it looked like it was a it was a combo drop or maybe just ending it short, but still able to close it out with the level one super. I like that using the Condor Spire there to interrupt what and just buffering the level one. And look at the damage, dude. That's a ton of damage. I know, dude. I, I love that buffer into the Breezing Hawk. <laughs> it's it's super good mm -hmm. and has been working out well for Chikote so far uh, throughout this bracket. But oh man, that that jump heavy punch, that jury stomp, man. Mm -hmm. So strong. Oh man, he's burnt out again. This is yeah. twice that he's done that. And Lily is a character you don't want to do that against. When she has her Condor Spires, it's terrifying to deal with on defense. Got hit on the wake up. I think Kung Fu Hustle tried to backdash away from that situation, but that is, you do have to hold that. Mm -hmm. Nice, the EX. Oh, nice. Good pickup. Good chunk of damage there. More importantly, has Tay with his back to the wall. How's he going to make this offensive pressure count? Okay, nice. I love this lockdown, but still do not doing too well in the drive meter situation. Not quite burnt out yet, but oh no, the stomp ended up side switching, and now the mash coming up from Tay. Three rounds straight. Kind of a trend for Tay in this bracket so far. Yeah. Okay, backing off there, doesn't want to deal with the fireball. And that's a relatively like positive situation for him to be in. Oh, I love that. Perfectly spaced Condor, spy, uh, Condor Spire. And I don't think it was plus, but it might have been zero, which meant the command grab mix-up was real. Ooh, 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 ooh. Walking a lot out. of drive rush. A lot of trying um, to brute force the mix-up. And Tay just standing idly by, being really defensive. And nice man, he took two stocks. Yeah, exactly. He took the opportunity. And look at how it's paying off. That's a huge chunk of damage. And now you get to go in with this drive reverse, uh, drive rush, excuse me, and really put on the hurt. Oh, God. All right. Both spent into the command grab. Tay. Dude, this is, uh, this is tough. This looks yeah. really tough for Kung Fu Hustle. No, I actually, I think Lily can do okay against Jury. Like, her normals can test pretty well, and she doesn't have to respect um, the fireballs in the same way. Nice, so level three, gonna replenish some of that drive, get a huge life lead. It's got two Fuha stocks, so aggression can happen right now, and one good hit. And Drive rushes back good. in. He's laying it on heavy. Now a good chunk of life lead. One more will do oh. it, and he gets the drive impact instead. Tay was worried about it. You know, he didn't know exactly what mix was going to be there, and he just caught, got caught blocking. Yeah. Yeah, tying it up now. Oh, so good. And that's what I talked about. Because of the Condor Spire, you don't have to respect the fireballs in the same way other characters do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, specific to this matchup, right? The fact that it can go over it, mm -hmm. uh, you can trade with you uh, for an advantageous point. But nice, perfect parry. Spent a little bit of meter on that. Hit by the scaling, but sitting pretty. Okay. Playing patient is both of them. Able to go back in and forcing the drive reversal, which is a win for Tay. Oh, but he does get clipped and losing all of that gray damage. The, the combo afterwards, less scaled because of it. And now look at how this has shifted into Kung Fu Hustle's favor. Got a huge punish here. Big oh, opportunity. God. And I don't know, not quite dead, even not with the Fuha stored. Oh no. Yeah, that button, I, I mean, hey, look, disjointed jumping buttons are kind of the crimes of Street Fighter 6, really. If your character's got one, people are going to complain. <laughs> True. Oh, okay, gets caught low. He wanted to try and walk out of the pressure. I don't blame him. All right. Oh, man, jumps oh, wow, out of that nice. too. And look at how this has changed around, doing another 25% there. Forced to wake up with the level one here. Tay just trying to get some space out of the corner. Mm-hmm. And builds up three stocks. Oh, he didn't Look leave. at that. Kung Fu, yeah, Kung Fu Hustle, he'll like, he'll get the damage off and then just backdash. Mm -hmm. Trying to sit pretty, but okay, burns out using the drive reversal. This is not a good spot, but okay, jumps away from the corner, back into the mid-screen, works a little bit better for him. Yeah, that, that jump out was so huge. It could save him the round. You know, even though he does have a life lead, this is what you have to worry about when you're burned out against Lily. One more command grab and you are dead. Yeah. If she but... gets in with another Condor Spire, oh, yeah! never mind. Just in range. Oh, no. I thought he walked out of that DI, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but DI does put you in the proximity guard situation, right? Like, you can't I just believe... walk away. 
I believe so, yes. I do know Proximity Guard on average is shorter compared to other games, but um, I, I do think you are correct. Okay, huge level three opportunity here for Kung Fu Hustle. Gonna get a big life lead, almost 50% here, maybe even a little bit more. And now this is, oh, did my. he bait it? Oh, okay, damn. A level two. Doesn't do that much damage, but you know, the point was to get back in the mid screen and reset to neutral. Now here we go, Kung Fu Hustle turning it up closer to the corner. And now Tay is gonna have to start putting out that stop oh. signs, but drive rushing, drive impacting through, excuse me, into oh, no! not oh, dead. Oh my gosh. He didn't have the, yeah, he didn't have the follow-up ready. That was nerve wracking, but right back into it. This is what I was talking about. All gas, no breaks. Nobody's taking a single moment to breathe here. They're just right back into the action. Mm -hmm. And I have to wonder if it's gonna work out in your favor. Okay, Tay just willing to take that mix up. Now Kung Fu also knows for the next time he goes for that safe jump, but spending a lot of time in the corner, Tay, here. After the after game one, it's been pretty tough. Oh, he's out of there, out. but he does yeah, get punished. Punish and able to get that Fuha store. Okay, there's the forward throw. This is looking bleak for Tay. Nice, the EX counter Spire to pass through the fireball. Over it, and now we're going back to footsies, but did not have the post Spire mix up situation ready. And now yeah. sitting at one HP. Okay, Oof. man, this is looking bad. Okay, hella, hella plus. But like with this kind of life lead, Kung Fu Hustle doesn't have to do much. And even taking that risk right there wasn't really like uh, heavily weighed against him. It was fine. I think what Tay needs to start doing here is is not be sitting at one win stock so often. Like you're gonna have to give up that space. Oh no! Oof. What a what a drive impact through the store from Kung Fu Hustle. This life lead is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. Drive gauge nicely replenished and yet again in the corner. And look at that. I, I feel like Tay nice. is just spending the wind stocks way too haphazardly. Needs to start building up a key. Yeah, there we go. Get the three. And now he's a lot more room. Oh no, drive rushes the drive rush. I, he cannot quite kill. Oh man, okay, he's ready. Yep, he understood that was the only way he was going to die there. Now he needs to make this mix count. He's got two stores left, and these wind-clad stocks are going to be oh. the life or death of him. He wasn't quite ready to anti-air. Had he gone for the anti-air DP, I think it would have worked. But he had been utilizing uh, Crouching Heavy Punch so often that he just went for it. And that opportunity for Kung Fu Hustle to go for that jump fierce, it's like, that's what you do, right? Like, that's going to beat it from that range is smart. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, really good stuff from Kung Fu Hustle. They'll be turning it around after a really dominant game one yeah. from Chakote. But I think it was just a mixture of, you know, kind of getting overextending on offense, you know, finding yourself without win stocks a little too often and having to give up at really bad situations to build that up. And those are the things that, you know, I feel put Lily kind of, you know, in a in a really bad spot when compared mm -hmm. to the rest of the cast is the fact that she has to give up so much of that. She's a momentum based character in the same sense that you know Jamie and Mano is, but it's a very like independently um, uh, monumentum uh, or momentum shift, uh, momentum yeah. build. Like you have to you have to be very disciplined in that. Whereas Mano, it's kind of you know autopilot build the uh, build the momentum. Same thing mm -hmm. with Jamie, but with with Lily, uh, you kind of have to like just sit at those stocks and be diligent with the way yeah, that you sure, manage sure. it, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a fair assessment. Um, and that's, you know, probably part of the reason why the character is like a bit of a struggle bus. You know, we don't see a lot of representation at a very high level. So with that being said, uh, you know, I still, I still think Chakotay is in a pretty good spot um, leading into the last, uh, the last World Warrior event and, you know, leading up to the finals. But um, hopefully next time he'll be able to get a better performance for himself. I'm sure that's what he wants. I know he's a fierce competitor, but he will bow out there at, I believe that's fifth place. Um, maybe sixth, um, but Kung Fu Hustle moves on, and so that means that we have one more match on uh, loser semifinals, and that is going to be Shen Chang versus Joey. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. So this is going to be you know the Mano versus the DJ, which is um, something that I really enjoy watching Mano kind of like deal with the upper tiers of the cast. Yeah. Um, well, let me let them know it's time to go. Um, solely because like she's a grappler, right? So, like tried and true, very, very at her core, a grappler. Um, and seeing the way that she has to like maneuver and then like the way that she has to play footsies, the reward that she can kind of get, um, and then applying 
you know, that navigation through the mid game is always yeah. really exciting for me to see. Yeah, I, she's a really interesting character. Like the way she's designed is very deliberate. And I think they put a lot of thought into like her strengths and weaknesses. Now that could be to her detriment, right? Um, we see, you know, one of the best players in the world struggling with her at, at the top level in IDOM. But I do think she's very interesting and has a lot of room for potential. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, I, I do think she's like really uh, fun and entertaining to watch because it's like this, this battle of attrition, right? You know, can I navigate these fireballs? Can I navigate these pokes? And then once I actually get in, if I land a command grab, it's going to get worse and worse until you're just dead. Yeah, it's 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 like the mid range is where I really love seeing Mano, uh, because mm -hmm. she does have like the options that she has there are incredibly risky for her, but when they work out well, it's it's so exciting to see. What a nice way to start this off with punishing to get herself in. Okay, there's the mix afterwards. Yep, got caught with the throw tech attempt. That's layer one. We'll see if it changes up next time. Joey's willing to block. Ah, the just cool sway, the war crime that we're seeing, and now here we go, the OD up kicks taken into the corner. Gotta watch out for a DI or, you know, another drive rush in. But actually just backing off, Sian Chan. Okay, he's in a pretty controlling position. Oh my gosh, and Joey didn't believe! He was not ready for that to connect. He assumed it was just going to be on block and Shen Chang able to get the punish counter throw. And now, although there wasn't much life for him to steal right there, what it did do is build him a ton of gauge. And so now he's even closer to three bars, which as we know for DJ means that you're in for a world of hurt. Oh man, so bots, I swear. But nice, Joey has been pretty good at checking any sort of approach. Oh. And now here we go. This is going to be pretty big. The level two. And not only did that do a good chunk of damage, but he's got him with his back to the wall there and guaranteed the burnout. I really respect that the, the awareness there from Joey and just guaranteeing that he would be in this position right here. We'll close it out there, close the two bars, and now we're tied up at a round apiece. Four medals going into the yeah. final round, and Joey's been here so often, really just trying to get that fifth medal. I don't think that he's able, been able to get it this entire bracket so far. Oh, nice. Good oh, poke there. Go. That stand did he get it? Oh, my God. There okay, there it is. Look at the damage. Now we're up to five. Voltron is assembled. Will yes. he defeat the evil that is DJ? Yeah, all five pieces of Exodia have been assembled. <laughs> and it could very well just spend... Uh, send spend him to the Shadow Realm. Room. Yeah, send him to the Shadow Realm. I'm sending you to the Philippines. Let's go. <laughs> to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> to Brazil. <laughs> all, right, all right, look at this patience, patience coming out. Yeah. Yep. Okay, did get the perfect parry, not able to get a punish though. But we see Joey is willing to sit on this life, but he's not going to overcommit. And now he does burn himself out, but you are... But, but he's dead. It was a risk he was willing to take. He had so much damage to back it up. Uh, I, I respect it. And this is this is planting the seed early. That's the first like big command grab he's landed. And now Shen Chang has to be a little more mindful of that going forward, depending on how many levels Joey has. Yeah, nice. Ready for the tech on that safe jump. And Joey just not really dissuaded in the corner situations at all. Nice check. All right, but, but he's out of there. Shen Chang backing off, trying to bait out that fireball. Okay, there's the forward throw, the jump scare. Is it going to be another one? Look at the damage. Sheesh. Yeah, huge damage. Try to perfect parry. Oh, oh nice. In the side switch. And I love that, too, that, like, it's oh, not a guarantee. It's not a hard knockdown, so actually, like, the resulting mix when you're in the corner is almost scarier because you're standing up into, like, plus frames immediately. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty scary. You know, it, it, even though it isn't a hard knockdown, exactly as you said, it's a pretty bad situation for you. But now, here we go. He's trying to perfect oh, parry everything, nice. but actually just drives on, drive rushes on, on through. Mm -hmm. Yep, taking advantage there of the long recovery off of the uh, the fireball, even from that range, just recognizing he would be able to drive rush Oof. in and probably poke him during the startup of something else. Oh, going to level three? He's gonna yep. go level three? Mm -hmm. Look at the damage, dude. He just did 60%. Man. God damn, that was like 65. That was yeah, so much I, damage. We, we talk about it all the time, man. <laughs> you know what that super's called? What? It's called Weekend Pleasure. Isn't that Jeez. sick? That's wild. Isn't that sick? Dude? <laughs> That's so cool. 
That is the last thing that I feel if I'm getting hit by DJ's level three combo for 70%. I am yeah, not. It's the uh, weekend. I I'm not enjoying you. it. I can't tell you who it's a pleasure for. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Uh, yeah. Again, Joey in the corner, but I'm always really impressed at how well he's able to fight his way out of them. Look at this. Again, putting out that crash okay. punch stop sign. Look at that. So up to four. One more command grab, and he is dead. It blocks it out there, but not able to take his turn back i think from that range the, even though it is minus six there on the heavy sobot you have to like be, try and take your turn back you're probably not going to punish very mm -mm, mm -mm. okay. slower pace near tries to pass through the fireballs but not gonna do it oh i love that dash just to not deal with the cross up joey really you know showing off his awareness there recognizing <laughs> space dead. you're dead dead Level three of the pasta do, and here we go. That's 110% going to kill. Oh, putting yeah. Joey up at two games in this set over CN. Yeah. I, yeah, we're, we're seeing here that like Shin, or I'm sorry, that, that Joey has a good handle on this particular matchup. The way he's threading the needle, you know, when he's choosing to jump, when he's choosing to dry brush in, into a poke. He's making it really hard for Shen Chang to feel comfortable. What a perfect parry. Just the way that Joey's able to control the screen positions oh, throughout man. this set has been so impressive. And the whiff punish there. And now burning out. Oh, no, no, no. I looked at the wrong side of the screen. But look at that life lead. It's insane. Okay. But right back at you. Okay. Going to guarantee that he can get the double dash Oki. The life lead is draining. He only needs one more hit. If you get caught with that just sway low, you better be careful. Oh, the, the perfect, perfect parry. parry! Bro, that was so good. This is it. This is the game. This is, we've, Street Fighter Six has awakened. The player base before, when the game was coming out, nobody was, nobody was excited around the idea that, oh, you have to perfect parry everything. It's going to be so hard. Look at everyone now. Look at this bracket so far. The perfect yep. parries have been so on point from Dual Kevin, from Joey. It's just been, you know, the name of the game for this bracket so far and it's going so well the di through this and look at this optimization from joey yeah guaranteeing that he gets the best corner carry gets the metal two now we're at two one more command grab and it's not quite going to be dead but it puts him in a prime position to steal this and go up three oh shin chang has to have something and not quite dead not quite that but i mean close enough pack it up can you make this comeback oh it's not happening Ooh. cn ggs to ff16 out of the bracket at fifth place, Joey gonna take this set 3-0 and move on into the bracket to face off against Kung Fu Hustle. Man. It was well, well fought from uh, from Shen Chang, but I, it did seem like he kind of like, what do I wanna say? It, it seemed like he didn't really have a contingency plan for Joey like getting these right reads. Mm -hmm. um, he, he wasn't, he just wasn't able to really feel comfortable in keeping Manon out and like walling her out. It was, it was really, really tough. And, uh, the reads pay off for a character like Manon, you know, she, she does have access to these like high damage command grabs when she's leveled up, when she has the medals. And so it's incentivizing you to make this big bet. And when it pays off, it's better than almost any other character in the game. That's what we saw. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's just the way that Joey is able to constantly put out stop signs for mm -hmm. CN's approaches and forcing him even in the later parts of the set to start to have to throw out uh, fireballs uh, as much as he possibly could. But even then, Joey was just so prepared, uh, doing the pirouette through them, uh, navigating mm -hmm. them so well, even even getting some a couple of really good jump ins on them. Um, we're just pairing them out, blocking them out. But it's it it just he set the pace, and those are yeah. the types of things that I really love to see um on grapplers you know I, and yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna be a grappler apologist here it's just that those characters especially mano like or because of mano is one of the more exciting ones to watch mm -hmm. um it, it's just really cool to see them have to navigate through those yeah. kinds of obstacles to get to their win condition and then you sure. see them get their win condition that's when you can start to complain like all right yeah, yeah okay <laughs> on to the next one but okay uh looking at our top eight we've got our matches set up our top four has been established. We've got Dual Kevin and Flash Metroid up on the winner side. And then we've got Kung Fu Hustle and Joey uh, up on the loser side. So this is going to be a very exciting set for us because 
Duel Kevin currently sitting at third in the rankings mm -hmm. for points, and Flash Motrin sitting at first. Um, every single one of these players so far, uh, with the exception of Joey, is like sitting right there, you know, right yeah. there for points. So uh, who's going to walk away with it today? Well, we'll see. And also, uh, Kung Fu Hustle, uh, as, a, as a point, uh, thing, something to point out, eliminated Flash Metroid at the oh. last World Warrior event uh, out at, at, um, at third. You yeah. Know, brought him okay. down to number three. So it's going to be really cool if they face off at any points in this top four. Um, hang on for like 20 seconds. I have to use the bathroom. I will be right back. Hold it no down. No problem. <laughs> I got you, Mustafalis. That's what I do best. I hold it down. Uh, as we get our players up into the next one, uh, we're going to... Flash Metroid is asking if we're good to go. I'm just going to say yeah. And then, you know, how fast can you, you know, blast and pee out, right? So we're going to get into our next set. It's going to be Dual Kevin's Luke versus Flash Metroid's Blanca. It's going to be kind of a... I wonder if Dual Kevin's ready for this set. Um, we have a lot of Blancas in the Midwest. But, um, you know, playing in SFL and against Mena, I wonder if Dual Kevin, um, you know, was been studying up on that matchup. But it's going to be exciting nonetheless, just because, you know, Dual Kevin, when he does study up, when he is ready for a really tough matchup, it, we see incredibly impressive play from him. One of the better Lukes, I think, of NA. But Flash Metroid has just been, you know, sitting in first place in points for a good reason. Um, yeah. Just incredibly impressive play uh from them so here we go all right starting off there a big perfect right and look at the punish too this is like it's so crazy how much more damage this does than basically any other character like because of the access that uh that he because of the access that uh that um luke gets with the perfect knuckles and like how that can add juggle points and conversions and stuff that's one thing he really excels at is like perfect parrying uh really pays off for him better than most all right there it is the target coming to the knockdown and there we see a perfect pair right back at you and i love that draining the drive gauge they're getting a huge lead there in that regard but now we're back to neutral and a big life lead still for dual kevin he's chilling yeah kind of chilling i mean that's that's kind of the name of the game for luke right you kind of just you control your space extremely well, yeah. and if anybody tries to encroach upon that, you do this, right? You do damage. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Dual Kevin taking first blood in the set, in this winner's final set. All right, another fireball right in your face. The sandblast controlling space better than just about any other fireball in the game. Yeah, I think Flash Mutra is trying to do the coward cross to just, like, pass through any of the fireballs just to see exactly how uh, sandblast uh -oh. happy he was going to be. Are we going to see a perfect? Oh, no. Yes, sir. That is more than enough. Perfect Look KO. At Look at that. Look at the damage just on Stan Fierce. Stan Fierce, cancel Stan Fierce. Dude. Mm -hmm. Optimized. Just get your he's damage a, out. He's a pretty good character. He's all right. He, you know, did you guys see Angry Birds tweet earlier today? Uh, saying that he thinks Luke is better than Ken. I gotta say, I've been saying that since the game came out. I was just gonna say that, Mustafa. I've been saying that since the game came out too. Luke, I swear to God, is like gotta be the best character in this game. You think JP is? Ken is? I get. I agree. They're great, but Luke, this guy's yo. Name one weakness. Name yeah, one I, of his weaknesses. I mean, okay, that one right there. You're not time in the crush fierce ring. You're gonna get punished, countered. Okay, you're not doing well for for me and Angry Birds case and and Mustafa's case here, Duel Kevin. Oh man, all right, man, look at the drive gauge. Flash Metroid just wailing away at that on defense. And now we do see Dual Kevin kind of busting out and just getting some ground back here. And they're pretty close on life, a little bit of a life lead for Flash Metroid, but Dual Kevin's trying to cut that down to size and no such luck yet. Yeah, nice buffer, sets up the doll, goes for a throw. So is this only just going to be a setup into something worse? Actually, no, because the jab out from Dual Kevin works out so well. Oh, the OD up back ball. 60% of the time, it works every time. Yeah, that dive ball is a menace. Burn him out, quick! Yeah, there you go, just sand blast his drive brush away. Oh my god, the drive rush forward fierce. He was not ready for that range. And Flash Metroid ends up eating that. Okay, ah, uh, not quite in range there to actually get the punish on the crouch fierce. Yeah, I love the way that Flash Metroid, you know, manipulated his his air movement right there, going for the, the cow crouch leap. Mm -hmm into the dive ball i gotta be honest i actually didn't know he could do that like i, I didn't know he could neither, do that special move out of it <laughs> neither did i 
<laughs> this dude's canceling specials into specials, dude. Like, like of Vitro. That's what I would. Yo, Vitro too. I'm so stupid. I meant Super too. <laughs> Take me back. Oh my God! Look Never at mind. the damage. I'm here and I'm happy. All right, the next hit confirm will surely spell death for hit, uh, Flash Metroid. He has to be careful about how he's approaching. Oh, he oh was really betting it all. He wanted really that to work, was. and it's safe. You know, and now he's pushing close to the corner, oh, and he a... was ready. You're not going to test my reaction, son. Not today. That was so, so sick. Mashing Memphis, taking it to game three. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is this going to be I two love three O's from Duel Kevin? Just It's all business today. All business oh, yeah. today. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's 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 what. Look, Angry Bird put that tweet out, and Duel Kevin said, "Yeah, bet." Watch. Let this. me remind you. No, I bet it wasn't true until Angry Bird put that tweet <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's the forward throw from Flash. He's got good corner position here. Back to the wall. Duel Kevin down to about 35, or I'm sorry, about 65, 60 percent damage. And now here is Flash Metroid has found himself in this position a lot, and it's just been difficult for him to close out rounds. He's yeah. finding himself in the mid range here, where it's hard to contest with Luke's like forward advancing buttons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Duel Kevin is going to have to start being very careful about sandblasting in the mid range because Flash Metroid has been uh, very, very prepared. You know, having the dual defense against them, he's mm -hmm. got the perfect parries into the slide. At that point, you saw the way that he got that round is because he just slid right under it for a punish counter. So right. now Duel Kevin's going to have to rely a little bit more on buttons or being a little bit more strict about how he spaces out, but still eats that slide. Oh, man, what a shimmy. And even into just the target combo, it does a good chunk of damage, but more importantly, gets the Oki afterwards. And now oh. baiting out a throw that time, but able to, not able to get the conversion. That's a huge missed opportunity. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh wow, nice. he just sends it. That's the first time all set, by the way. You're gonna have to, at some point. Overhead? Yeah. This could be dead. Yeah, if he wants to spend level, level two? two. Oh, oh level, level one. one? No, level one's even gonna... Oh, not quite. It's not, I... But... You know, just blocking it. Yeah. It's going to do you really well. He is just in full control. And, like, you can tell he's really putting the pressure on round after round, interaction after interaction against Flash. He's really starting to run out of ideas. Yeah, what a mash from Duel Kevin 2. Mash out of the uh, the Drive Rush Link. All right, patience from both of them. There's the parry, Flash Metroid, making sure his driving gauge doesn't get whittled down by those sand blasts. Okay. I love the footsies that we're playing here. Duel Kevin being a little bit more on the defensive, but the Super 2 has now been activated. Oh boy, this is scary. Especially if he gets to throw down a ball. Whoa, whoa, where are you? Was that what are you doing over there? Okay. Oh man, and fine. look at... It's off screen though. So this is a win for Duel Kevin. Even being so low on life, he's in a good position, but does overextend, hoping to get the punish there on the Blanca ball. No such luck, and Flash Metroid takes it all the way to the bank, putting a game on the board. Yeah, the Blanca Chan was, uh, you know, I don't know, a little too distracted coming in. Yeah, it was a red herring. Yeah, I had a, had a swig of Jamie's drink before he showed up to work today. <laughs> Oh man, there it is, the tried and true, never failing, the uh, the up back dive ball working so much for uh, for Flash. Just really, it's been like the MVP of his tournament run. Right. Yeah, I think the amount of success it has has finally reached double digits. No, for sure, for sure. Okay. He's walking him down slowly but surely. He's willing to take you know a little bit of hits here and there. Oof. And I love that. Look at the damage on this too. Sheesh. Yeah. Can't get a little, can't get too, you know, reliant on those sandblasts. Oh, the trade combo? Unfortunate. And the hop over. Not oh, he kill, dropped it. Oh, oh. No, oh, no. That was so tricky. I got hit. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but we take those. I wonder what Duel Kevin pressed in order for that nice whip punish with the low forward. Look at that. Into the corner already. Back dash. Oh, he tried to go for, uh, you know, stealing his turn back. It wasn't going to be a real punish, but he could steal his turn back. And now, just like that, that mistimed jump from Duel Kevin allows Flash to get out of the corner. Yeah, these slides have been insanely good for Flash Metroid. The DI block into the level three. Oh, no. And look at that. He's sweating. He's burnt out. He's out of electrolytes. And now he is down on his luck. Is he going to be able to actually withstand this onslaught from Blanca? Uh-oh. Dead. He's More than dead. 
Yeesh. You know, there was probably another four to five hundred damage there left on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just died before. Okay, so you done. know about that. So I remember the last time I saw, I was watching a hologram Mike Ross play at Roundhouse, mm -hmm. and it was that exact combo, and there was just it just kept going. Yeah, it kept going, and I was like, "There's, you, there are three different points where I thought the combo was over." <laughs> but okay, game five between here and the winners finals, Will Kevin Flash Metroid. Nice with punish with the target combo. And I just want to take a moment to, you know, just really thank the Lord for first of threes. Because we get to see this kind of adaptation, these late game adjustments that matter to these top level players. You know, it takes a little bit of time. You know, the bandwidth might not be quite there. And it takes a little bit of time to get the download. Now we are seeing these adaptations. Oh! And now the chess match has gone on even further between these two. Yeah, hopefully Dual Kevin's got you know, what he needs at this point to make those certain adaptations. Mm -hmm. It still looks like Flash Metroid is in a very commanding position here. Man, and he's really running with it. He's turned up the offense tenfold. Oof. Look at that. He's down to one more throw and it's gonna kill. Blocks it out this time. Working on that drive gauge, just hammering away at it. No such luck. And he gets the... Okay, this is a huge opportunity. Doesn't bite on the oh, shimmy. Nice. But he burns himself out. Yeah, burnt out. So now there's a lot of breathing room here, but level two is available for Flash Metro if he wants to make sure that that burnout is not a problem. Now he's doing full screen sandblast. Yeah, he's got to be very careful with this. He needs to position this properly so that way oh. he doesn't get slapped with the slide. But he, he got hit. The mash out into level two. He's dead. He's dead. Absolutely. Peace, my baby. That was such. This is huge for Duel Kevin. That he stole that away. He had no business winning that round, and in like the clutchest fashion possible, he checked the dash. He converted into the level two when he needed it, and just like that, he is on the verge of winning this. Oh God, dash in! Yeah, this is scary now. Sets up the doll. Oh, oh but the up ball. We have definitely. It's it's too much success rate. Dude, look at this damage. It's, it's not the it's not the move that's the problem. It's Flash Metroid with the move. Someone take that away yeah. from him. <laughs> Cheat code. Crouch. Look at that. Oop. Okay. Oop, oop. He's not gonna let the same thing happen twice. He understood the error of his ways last time. He's willing to just block this nice. out so he can get his drive gauge back. But man, this is looking bleak. He has to yeah. be really careful. Yeah, Dual Kevin needs to rack on as much damage as possible before that drive meter comes back. And this could be it. No, not going to be it. Not going to build a level three. Oh, man. It's so close. He put he racked on so much damage while Flash Mushroom was in burnout. And here we go. Level two. We'll get him after the Sandblast. Nice. Did not get dangerous, but look at him. Still putting out those obstacles. Not trying to have him ball through. That's exactly what he wants to do. But he was prepared. Oh, the my God. coming out. He broke everything. Oh, the throw. But he's sitting at level three. Critical art now. Oh, oh my god, and he got caught sleeping on the job. Flash in the 11th hour, clutching it back from the jaws of defeat. And now we go down to the final round, final game. Who's going to take it? Oh, it's anybody's game right now, but Duel Kevin sitting with level 3. He could rack on something really disastrous for Flash Metroid. Dropped a whiff punish there, and here's back in the corner. He's really trying to get out of here. Nice punish counter. Oh, but the whiff on the heavy flash knuckle. Hey, there's the back throw. Duel Kevin in a prime position here to actually get a life lead back, or excuse me, extend his life lead. And just like that, he gets the knockdown. Okie afterwards. But is he going to overextend Flash? Hoping that happens, and you are dead. No, not quite. Not, not quite, dead. Not quite, not quite dead. Oh, he wanted to save a little bit of drive gauge just to ensure he could have an OD reversal if he needed an OD fireball. This is a prime position. Is Flash actually going to do the impossible? Yeah, this is his match to lose, really. Oh okay. no, the slides have been so good. Tries to jump back from any situation, but there it is. Duel Kevin has been so consistent in checking those drive rushes. And there it is, 3-2. Moving on to the winner's side of Grand Finals. Duel Kevin, oh my God, you can't you sick. can't have my heart exploding like this. That was yeah, so I mean, sick. You can't write it better. Just two back-to-back -back clutch rounds from each of them, making sure that they're extending their life a little bit further. The lifeline is not dropping yet. But ultimately, Duel Kevin moves on. But on winner's side, he secures a spot in Grand Finals. Flash will move down to losers, fighting the winner of, I believe it is Shen Chang and uh, Joey. Is that right? Uh, it is going to be uh, Kung Fu Hustle Joey. Oh, my bad. Okay. He fights the winner of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and that's going to be the next match that we're going to show you right now. Loser semifinal. But there's just so much to shake off. 
from the last set it was just it was just you know a brawl dual kevin seemed very poised to take it mm -hmm. and then the two will come back from the two game comeback from flash metroid and then a final game final round situation man i, I swear if dual kevin was not as prepared with the I, I was just so curious how flash metroid was still willing to do a button block into drive rush because they got checked every single time is yeah. there really no way that blanca can can you know stop that early or be able to like catch those jabs it just seemed like it was a losing situation anytime uh, after game three that mm -hmm. um that anytime that he tried to uh, go into a block drive rush mm -hmm. it got checked every single time i don't know i mean i i have to imagine part of it is like weighing the risk reward on dual kevin's side he understood that he had such a big life lead and he like dual kevin had such a big life lead there towards the end that he recognized uh flash was gonna have to bet big with like you know maybe trying to bait a throw with the forward heavy kick or um you know maybe go for like some sort of neutral jump or something and he was willing to throw out that jab and catch him on the heavier buttons that were slower on startup yeah yeah it's uh it's it's just a lot you know going into who knows if we see the rematch in grand finals we'll see um but up now We've got Joey versus Kung Fu Hustle. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this is one of the harder matchups for Mano because this is a very like footsy based matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot that Mano can maneuver around because Jerry's buttons are just, you know, as good as they are. Um, you you have yourself uh, have a lot of qualms with the way that Jerry plays because of how, you know, you you say she's. I'm not gonna say the word that you use, but I know that uh, <laughs> you feel as though Jerry is a, a pretty patient. Uh, character to play. <laughs> yeah, she sets the pace. She, yeah, yeah, she's uh, she's definitely privileged in a lot of regards. Um, she uh, able to get the the big punish counter there, um, and now Joey with his back to the wall, pretty down on life, but is able to land an air and hit there, confirmed into the drive rush cancel, and now just like that, taking the life lead back and in a prime position, but overextends at the wrong Oof. time. That is something she is vulnerable to is those drive impacts nice yeah but the corner situation not good for anybody and look at that one touch away especially in the burnout is that a chip yep there was chip mm -hmm. all right there's a round for joey now they're tied up at one piece who's going to draw first blood here and get that ever important lead in this first of three set Oof, caught with the low the level one coming out yep oh sorry the level two the etoile Mm -hmm. okay. I like that. But look at the drive gauge on Kung Fu Hustle side. That's a win mm -hmm. for Joey. He can actually guarantee to either get some damage or burn him out. It's a good position to find himself in. Look Ooh, at the that. The punish is huge. Look at that. Just burnt out with buttons on its own. But the level three. I respect it. I also respect it. I think this is going to burn out. I think it's a bar and a half. So it's just going to be outside of burnout. Right? Yeah, I, I think yeah. he's got barely anything left. Oh, I love that. No, making sure it's not going to happen. Look at him playing defensively now. Really squirrely, oily, you know, snaking himself oily. away. As, you know, he's like slippery, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I love you using oily for the no. <laughs> okay, that's definitely dead there. Twal's going to yes. kill this time. Yes. Joey takes game one. <laughs> Go ahead, <laughs> snaky, <laughs> oily. Uh, all right, Slippery. first first blood does go to Joey, and I think that could set the the precedent for this match. Uh, you know, the tone is going to be on his side, and that punish counter shoot put him back into the corner, but Ooh. the perfect parry right back at you. Super clean, perfect parry. Went for the safe jump there, but Joey's still mashing on it. Okay, I like this patience. Perfect oh. parry, jabs right out of it, and look at that conversion from the very tip. Able to get it, and here we go. The command grab, racking up the damage. Oh, All the, the range. And we have to note the reason why, I am willing to bet the reason why that hit is because she was leveled up a medal. For those of you who don't know, when she gets more levels on her medals, it does actually increase the range on her drive impact. What? Yep. Who would know that except Manon haters? All right, how did you know that? That's crazy. I did not know. That's amazing to know. It's really All strong. Of you Manon players, that that is exceptionally strong. I would think, especially with like how strong drive impact is as a tool for her because it's just mm -hmm. one of her tools, you know, to get through and get in on that mid range. But that's that's awesome. 
Okay, now we see the patience here. Just bro throwing out these like long range pokes. That's how Manon really likes to get, set up the command grip, right? You know, she wants to annoy you. She wants to whittle away your drive gauge and really make you afraid to block. And then next thing you know, you're getting command grab. Yeah, look at that. We're back to some footsies here, trying to play neutral. The dread reversal. Just send this back to where Joey wants it to be. Says, I can't control the space if you're in my face. Nice. The jump scare low, catching, it, catching everybody. Yeah, the French jump scare. All right, jumping. Oh, he was ready. Yeah. Joey has not jumped much. I'm impressed. That's dead. Yep. There we go. Optimal. Pas de deux. All right, there it is. Another one for Joey. That's two for him. He's looking to maybe run away with it. But we have seen this before in other sets. We've seen people go up 2-0, 2-1, and then the reverse 3-0 happen. So I'm not going to count Kung Fu Hustle. He's got a strong character in Jury, and if he can make maybe one or two adjustments, switch things up a little bit and feel a little more confident in his offense, I think he could you know, bring things back on his side. Yeah, I'm pretty sure out of the 3 3 twos that we've seen, that's the perfect parry. Uh, out of the 3 3 twos we've seen, they've been, you know, from, from the depths. Yeah. So I'm not counting Kung Fu Hustle out of this in the slightest. Sitting in burnout, though. Very nice using that button or using that fireball to space himself out but in the corner in burnout this is really scary just gonna have to hold all these throws oh no. that's so cheap all right now oh he actually Shots went for the reset sets. and he was ready this is such a huge opportunity for him with so much drive gauge on his side he can steal this back and he oh he's oh, not, he's dead. not dead. Oh, okay low. <laughs> the other french jump scare <laughs> All right, Joey, staring down the barrel of a potential 3-0. Is Kung Fu Hustle going to reel back and actually claw his way out of this deficit to try and get something going? Or is Joey going to just sweep this clean? Oof. Nice combo. Bring it to the corner. But Joey, historically, not too bad in the corner. The DI is not making it any better. The oh, he's out of there. actually jumped away. Nice. And oh, look at the... No. Dude, the composure from Joey. Okay. Ah, okay. He puts All a stop right. to it, but I gotta be honest, if I'm Kung Fu Hustle, I don't feel great about that. Like, no. having to kind of bust out with the OD reversal there is, I think, frustration. Yes, it, it definitely is frustration. It's not something that you can do too often. Um, so I'm pretty sure that Joey, once has the advantage, is just gonna continue to run him over. Because Kung Fu mm -hmm. Hustle's not feeling pretty reticent about this. The level three getting spent early, you know, gonna build some of that drive back to hopefully minimize the time in burnout but still not the best situation for kung fu hustle no that that burnout like it got him oh. a life lead but this jump in is huge go for the level two there that is still going to make sure that that gauge stays frozen for a little bit now you get to make him worry about the drive impact now he's out of drive uh burnout excuse me he's sitting oh. a little more comfortably oh look at that damage racking up the air to air keeping joey alive Oh no, but okay. the rush ended up, you might have it. We might see the reverse, at least maybe two games coming out from Kung This is the start. This is the start of it. Yeah, we're seeing it. Joey, unfortunately, putting himself in burnout with that drive rush, eating that DI to the face, but here we go. Game four. And drive rushing in, making sure he can get this offense going. The snowball is rolling down the hill, but is it going to matter in a big enough way? Blocks the overhead there, now we're reset back to neutral. Oh, getting that damage slowly racked up okay. into the command grab. Nice. Trying to bait out a DP. No such luck. Parries the fireball there. And just out of range for that light confirm off of the low. And again, back to neutral here. Now, is he going to spend it? No, he wants to save his bar. Build up another meter. Oh, the DI. Uh, not, just out of range. Yeah, just out of range. Yeah, even in burnout, not dissuaded by that. Joey letting out a spin into set point. Right, there's another one. There's the knockdown. Now he's up to four medals. All right, pushing him all the way to the corner here. This block string paying off for Kung Fu Hustle. Oh, but he gets crossed up. This is huge for Joey. Look at the strong position he is in to actually steal this. Okay, Kung Fu Hustle had to burn out in order to get out of this. Now has level three and spends it immediately. Not this quite is pretty dead. low scaling. So it's going to do a good amount of damage. Okay, but not enough to kill. But still, Joey having to play on the back foot here. With four medals on his side, he is that oh, that's dead. That's dead. 100 110% into the level 3. Joey is moving on to the loser's final.
to face off against Flash Metroid. Wow. I love oh, the critical art. Oh, it's so good, yeah. So much uh, so much charm put into this character. She's very oh, yeah. charismatic. Yeah, but the, the, the characters that are centered around dancing, mm -hmm. both of them are really cool, DJ and Manil. Uh, so good and stuff what about to Jamie? Jamie? Jamie, too? Ooh. So Jamie. Anyway, good stuff to... <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, Jamie is cool. I, I'll, I'll give it that. Everybody's cool. All right. Uh, so, yeah, very nice. Good stuff to Joey. Uh, moving on to the Loser's Final. But before mm -hmm. we actually, uh, you know, get the Loser's Final into it, we're going to do a really quick ad read for mm -hmm. you guys. It's our last one of the day. Uh, so before we get into Loser's Final and then Grand Final. So let's go. Take it away. Yep. Hang tight, guys. Uh, do you want it, Seth? Sure. I'll read the slides. <laughs> I don't mind who reads the slides. But as you can see up on the screen, we've got the U.S. Midwest number five. I'm oh, sorry. I thought it was going to be a video slide. Uh, okay. We've got the U.S. Midwest number five uh, on November 11th. So that's going to be the last open tournament for the World Warriors. So join us for the next one. Uh, Start.gg slash, uh, slash SF6 Midwest, the same link that you guys have been viewing. Uh, you know, get your points for closing out this season at your shop at the top eight regional showcase finals and win your way into capcom cup we also have um you know for the cpt the capcom pro tour 2023 earn your chance to win your way to a million dollar prize pool that's kind of the buzzword that we've been using all the way since it's been revealed at the beginning of this year uh scan that qr code in order to uh you know qualify for your region but we've also got uh, where are we in the slides? FGC meetups. Oh, this is a, uh, hey, look uh, look at it. Who better to talk about FGC meetups than yours truly? The, large F the largest FGC local in the United States uh, hosting out of uh, Skokie, Illinois, hosted by yours truly. Uh, mm -hmm. November 17th is the next date. Uh, so we got Street Fighter 6, Mortal Kombat 1, King of Fighters 15, Guilty Gear Strive, and Tekken 7 with a $5 bracket fee. Uh, it's we're always going to have the most up-to-date games. We're always going to have you know the newest games that come out So as you know all the games that are coming out within the next few months You can expect to see them at FGC meetups. It's also is you're watching a Capcom stream It is a partner of Capcom's exclusive Street Fighter 6 locals program So you guys have a chance to win uh, exclusive Street Fighter 6 merchandise on site mm -hmm. So if you guys are in the Chicagoland area or just in the Midwest in general and are willing to travel out Come on down to FGC meetups and get your exclusive Street Fighter 6 swag. We have so much of it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm yeah. always really happy to uh, hand that out. Uh, scan that QR code there. Start at Jesus slash FGC meetups. And the biggest regional of the Midwest now has a sister event in Roundhouse Tag. Uh, as you can see, April 12th through 14th, it's going to be the first... Uh, well, not the first, but, you know, the Midwest's first regional team tournament. So it's going to be at the same venue, Ignite Gaming Lounge, bringing you a series of singles, doubles, and team crew battles over the course of three days. Uh, registration is going to go live uh, at the beginning of the new year, so January 1st, 2024. So keep your eyes open for which format, which games, and which possibly impromptu events are going to be happening on site, Skokie, Illinois, this April. So uh, we're going to transition right from that into our loser's final. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have Joey versus uh, Flash Metroid. Yeah. Let me so, let them know we can go. Yeah, we're gonna see Manon versus Blanca. Now, I I have to imagine this is gonna be kind of a pretty tough match for Manon, um, if only because like, although she does have good footsie buttons and like her command grab does a lot of damage, where she struggles is like actually landing a meaningful hit. If you're fighting a strong player that has, you know, kind of the slippery approach and a character like Blanca that's like so good at, uh, so good at like really just being all over the screen, making it really hard to pin him down, it's gonna be tough for you to land that meaningful hit. And I have to imagine Flash is really competent in this matchup and understanding it fundamentally. Oh, here we go. Already starting off. With Crazy action, spinning the bar. Ooh, big conversion there off of the punish counter. And now gaining some corner positioning here, but uh, back to neutral and now Flash able to actually get out the Blanca Chan. This could be huge. Oh yeah, the drive rush to get in there, but no full conversion. And actually the drive impact whips. And now the Blanca ball is activated. The Blanca Chan, same thing. Just as oppressive. 
<laughs> Look at this pressure coming out from Joey talking about oppressive. Got a big life lead. Okay, does get clipped, and slowly but surely that life we life lead is dwindling away. Oh, oh you... from Joey! Woo. From the hop, but what a command grab to close it out. Yeah, that was a uh, kind of a jump scare. It was really took everybody by surprise. Yeah, I mean, what better woodcomber's tool, really? Than mm -hmm. Okay, there it is. The punish counter Blanca Ball into the full screen slide. Such a huge, uh, oh. like, really, like, prolific tool for Blanca in this game. Like, yeah. so great for him to get big mid uh, full screen conversions like that. Yeah, look at Joey's drive meter. It's super low, and the slide's been coming out. The right. level one to get a side switch and some damage. And escape that mixed situation. Oh no, the whip punish. Okay, not ready to anti air there. No reset. He does get caught trying to uh, dash back, but this is still anybody's game. And just like that, Joey ready to fire from the hip immediately into the drive impact back. He takes the round first game on his side. I was really expecting the super to close it out, but you know, command grab is going to do it just as well. Joey putting a point on the board for himself. Mm hmm. Into the next one already getting himself a medal within the first 10 seconds. Yeah, and a big life lead too. He's really sitting pretty here going to this next one. He tries for the mix up. There it is finally. Command grab comes. And one more and you're dead. He had to jump out. Oh no, Joy pressed something on that safe jump. This is going to be huge for them. Walker Chan <laughs> activated, but parries it away. Nice Dude. Air he has been doing that throughout the entire top eight tonight and has been working out and Man. there it is again flash metroid what are you doing the second raw di in a row getting di back he's a good reversal from joey taking it you know we we saw we did see this actually work a bit earlier um with uh with one of his other sets that joey was getting caught with that and so i'm sure flash paid attention and also generally speaking manon does have some issues dealing with di and neutral but if you're playing against somebody who is really slow and patient like this and not throwing out like these really risky uncancelable buttons it might not work out how you want that's exactly the point is that joey plays an extremely defensive and proactive play style mm -hmm. very proactive in his defense very nice dash forward for the level five metal Ooh. But it's still off of the perfect parry scaling, oh, so it's not going to do too much. But yeah, that's absolutely dead into the level three. Flash Metroid probably has done a lot of research, but still needs to understand that Joey is, you know, very, very aware of mm -hmm. exactly how people want to approach. And he's been super good at putting out the stop signs. I'm sure that Flash Metroid thinks, oh, the, you know, Joey's relying on buttons to throw out stop signs. Yeah. I'll just DI into them. But Joey just showing he's ready at all facets. So. Maybe Flash Metroid, you know, as, as we can see, it's only two games up to O, not out of this yet. And Flash Metroid really excels near the tail end of a set. That is true. We have seen him come back from, uh, you know, worse deficits. And he is somebody that uh, ut utilizes the full time frame of a match to download. So we could see things change up here in the next round or two. Okay, look at this life lead already. Oh, gets caught. Hey, look, oh, God forbid a, a Mano wins a World Warrior event and then that goes out onto Twitter and people say, See? <laughs> See? <laughs> Grapplers are a problem. Dead. Oh, no, that's dead. And five medals on Joey's side. He has the, the right arm, the right leg, the left arm, the left leg, and the head of the Forbidden One. He is about to obliterate if Flash doesn't tighten things up. Backing off, parrying that, and gets another trip, and finally Flash busts out with that OD up ball. And the perfect parry, this is a huge opportunity for him. Not a ton of damage, but more importantly, taking away that drive gauge and oh, getting nice. the corner position. With Manon's back to the wall, she's really in a bad spot. Blankachon, level three is available, but whoa, the back throw, but he's gotta be careful. Nice, I love that Joey did not try to press continue because after recognizing that the Blancachon is still there, but Flash Metroid ended up fighting his way out of this. And look at this, exactly as we specified earlier, Flash Metroid really turning it up from the brink of defeat. Mm -hmm. And with the OD <laughs> up back dive ball yet again, Dude, strongest I'm... tool in his arsenal probably. Yeah, that that thing is absolutely getting the, uh, the MVP of the finals. It's like, putting in so much work he you know he's glad that he signed that contract because that move is uh really carrying him oh, yeah. I, I don't even mean that in a derogatory way it's just putting in so much work well you don't 
<laughs> oh, level three, but that's active. Yes, nice block Look at for the Flash pickup. Metroid. And that's going to burn him out. Yeah. Dude. You're dead. Not Joey quite. Pressing. Not quite. Blocking this, though. Oh, interesting. I think Joey res thought that Flash Metroid was going to respect um, any sort of reversal option. So mm -hmm. Joey tried to just do the low, you know, do the greed center yeah. out. But that was not working out. All right, this What's is the, name the start. Of it's just uh, the, it's the it's the core circle back kick, but I don't. Uh, I I, like I can it. check. I can look at de FAT de right now. Degage. Oh, dig 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 I think. Degage. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, I was just really curious. I love knowing the move names. Yeah. All right, throwing out the Blanca Chin, and again, time and time and time again, nobody is respecting it. It's like, how do you respect it, right? You know, generally when somebody jumps back, you you get to take your screen space, you get to try and apply pressure, <laughs> not against Blanca. Nice, and going into the set point with four medals. Joey, really good uh, response to the Blanca Chan approaching. Goes for the cross up just into the command grab, and that really started the momentum there. All right, parrying it, taking his turn back, able to get a little bit of drive gauge damage, but we're still pretty even. You know, no one's really done any significant damage to the life bar, and trying to just feel each other out to figure out who can actually get some uh, attack perspective on their side. No anti air. Okay, there's the knockdown. Joey able to apply something, get a little bit of damage, but we've seen him. He's willing to play this slow, steady game. He's not gonna uh, bet bet all the chips, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Joey yet again, just throwing out those jabs. Trying to roll out, but oh no, the drive rush yet again works at Joey's death. Oh no! Oh, the punish counter is gonna be huge. Meaty back heavy punch. Oh man, this is such a big turnaround. He's no not letting way. him jump. You're dead. He wanted so badly to get out of the corner. He was terrified of the regular throw, the command throw, whatever it was. He just had to get out. And Joey sniffed it out from a mile away and was hitting him with meaty after meaty after meaty, just clipping him until he was dead. Flash Metroid, unfortunately, out at third again. Mm -hmm. For the second week in a row... I mean, I wonder how the point distribution is going to play out after this week, and, and we're going to see if Flash Metroid is still sitting at the top spot, but right. that was insanely impressive from Joey yeah. <laughs> to come out, uh, who's, who's sitting at fifth. Uh, so mm -hmm. they win this. They're not going to be able to beat uh, Flash Metroid in points, but I'm just I'm so curious. Uh, Dual Kevin yeah. currently sitting at third, and that's what our grand finals is going to be. It's going to be Dual Kevin on the winner's side up against Joey. And man, I, what a tear that Joey's having right now. It's so impressive. Yeah, he's like, he is somebody, he, like anybody in the Midwest knows Joey is a killer. But he is somebody who hasn't quite had like the same kind of success on uh, like like a national stage, like, like somebody like Brian F or uh, even Chakotay in some regards or Jess the Kid. He's like just outside of that range. But people know that like when he's on his A game, he is just as good as any of them, if not better. And so to see him here clawing his way back into grand finals on loser side is no shock to anybody who knows the name. And you better get, you better like come correct. You better recognize and rec like understand that he is gunning for that top eight spot. And he wants to be on winner side in the finals. It, it's, it's, he's not going away anytime soon. Yeah, this is like, wickedly impressive um showing so far for this whole bracket i mm -hmm. i've i, I want to say this is like one of the more impressive top eight so we, we we didn't get to see you know um eli the curry in this top eight yeah. we don't see just the kid in this top eight uh we were arguably like some of our better uh midwest yeah. players mm -hmm. um but we're seeing our, our world warrior regulars still so here we yeah. go grand finals dual kevin versus joey all right, there's the knockdown, dual Kevin. Getting clipped with the overhead there, but not ready to confirm off of the counter. There is a huge punish for, damn, and just like that, nearly 35%, but the perfect parry into the back throw is such a momentum shift for Joey. He can maybe take this all the way to the bank. Look at Ooh. that. Okay, yeah, nice. A fully spaced out for the yeah. back medium kick. Mm -hmm. Just to just to make sure, you know, the that dual Kevin is devoid of defensive options there, but there we go. Nice reaction, getting that with punish. Woo! All of that off of a buffered crouch medium punch. 
All right, blocking. Oh, yep, again, not ready to confirm that uh, that counter hit just a frame late there. But now we're back to neutral, and Dual Kevin's pretty confident here. He's walking into the space, taking back that mid range so that he can try and pressure with that crouching medium punch, the crouching medium kick. Mm, frame trap. Enjoy press with the level one to come out. There we go. Patience yet again from Joey. Does not want to try to overstep the aggression. Oh, no whiff punish. That was a huge opportunity for Duel Kevin, but he's playing a little, uh, you know, close to his chest. He's not willing to overextend just yet. And that's the kind of player he is. Yeah, absolutely. Joey's, you know, very much in Duel Kevin's mind where he'll, like, he'll put out a stop sign, do something a little bit risky, know that Duel Kevin wants to try to take space, but takes those little hits mm -hmm. nice oh my check dude he was already not quite dead oh that did kill that did a lot of damage Sheesh. so much damage yeah all right game one going to joey and joey's got a lot of games to win if he wants to take this set uh take this bracket he was coming in from i'm really impressed with how ready he was to check that drive rush oh my god we just got i mean both of these guys are insanely <laughs> good at checking drive rush yeah. nice the cross cut from dual kevin all right, spacing it out with the stand roundhouse. That punish counter back throw. And man, this is not good for Joey. The punish counter with the target combo. And just like that, he is down to 20, 10, 10% life. Eight. Why you just sent it? Oh, Damn. The EX send. Okay. Duel Kevin uh, absolutely signed that with an exclamation point, you know, sealed that letter and put it right in his face. Yeah, punish that counter was... doing that a little too close. And now, yep, get that plus frames. Another one right back at you. This is looking bleak. If he gets clipped with one more hit, it is more than enough. And that punish counter off the shimmy. You manifested the hit, Mistopheles. You said, oh, he's going to do one more hit. You sprinkled it in there. You wrote it in the script. You wrote it into the death note for Joey. Yeah. We'll die by shimmy. That's all it took. Yeah, very clean. Okay, here we go. Game three. And he's trying again. No such luck. Joey, you know, recognizing the error of his ways and keeping his hands to himself. No PDA this time around. Stop it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Getting him okay. into the corner. And it doesn't good life lead. Cycling those plus frames. Ooh, You're man. not getting out. Look at the amount of buttons that Dual Kevin is pushing out there. Oh, oh he tried. It. Yeah, he yeah. did try to go for a cross up, cross cut, I believe. Mm -hmm. oh, wanted to bait out a DP. Didn't work that time. Joey in a good position to try and make this comeback. One more throw. Will do it. And Dual Kevin knew. He was terrified. Tried to backdash. Tried to maybe jump out. Whatever it was. He got clipped. And Joey took that all the way to the bank. Oh, my God. The whip punish on the whip punish. Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, layers add up. She's got the gloves on. You know, she doesn't want to have to do it. True. She's a germaphobe. Mm -hmm. Oh, Not that was ready. so tricky. I really like that. He's been utilizing, and that's something you see Manon's do, right? They they utilize like the fake out spin, you know, whether it's going to be the hit grab or whatever it is, um, to try and kind of Sweet. frame trap you. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> Did you see that? You're trying to frame trap with Sweet. <laughs> I respect Good it. Damn it, dude. Yeah. He's built different. He is built different. Well, I mean, only because of okay. him. Damn, not quite dead yet. You do. Oh, he wanted to go for a drive rush and no such. Or actually, maybe that was supposed to be drive. Uh, or it's supposed to be parry. I bet that's what it was. And just burnt himself out on accident. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, you know, that is something that I don't. I don't know if we'll ever actually see somebody fully in tune with their like drive gauge situation to recognize like when they're actually that low like just barely below half that they can't go for like a dry brush or whatever I'm just in awe at joey's reactions on these raw Dude. drive rushes yeah he's been able to check them every time even with the sand blast the damn it starts up pretty fast for him to spin through it and get this insane lead right now what a whip punish yet again joey is just so in control he is locked in. My guy can see the frames. He can see the code. And Duel Kevin is running out of options. Ultimately, that crouching medium kick seals the deal. It's another round for Joey. He's looking to reset this fast. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the perfect to do it. Manon, really strong. And I wonder what that's what that discussion on Twitter is going to be like. But again, yet another great whiff punish coming out from Joey. The DI. Drive impact. Look at that damage, Mistopheles. And at five Dude. middles. This is so scary. Yeah, literally one more grab and Duel Kevin is dead. If he gets command grabbed, he's done. 
He has to be so careful about like what he does and like how he actually lets him approach. He has to be so ready. Oh god. Dead. It. It's a level three. There okay. it is. That's your the quickest reset in the West. Like, in the Midwest, okay? So Joey fast. really wants this title, really wants these points, and really wants a shot of that million dollars. Duel Kevin. I mean, like most no disrespect to Duel Kevin. He's an insane player on his own yeah. as well. You know, the reactions coming out from him too throughout the bracket that we've seen today has been spectacular. But he's just so ready. I wonder why we went yeah. over. Yeah, here we go. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, no, no. That's me. I was trying to spectate. <laughs> I need him to No no <laughs> It's your turn to step up. up dude. Are you serious? You're the final boss, Seth. You're the only one who can stop Joey. Are you a bad enough dude to oh, defend the Midwest? Can happened? you defend I Chicago? No, dude. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna just. I'm, I can't kill the lobby. All right. Anyway, while we uh, while we go in, just kill me. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna reset this. I was trying to hit the spectator. All right, but, but, but again, let's just talk about the way that Joey has been so ready for for everything that's been yeah. happening today. Is that beat him? No. <laughs> um, it's just been like, it's been you know against Flash Metroid, against yeah. Kevin, against like everybody that's been playing through in the, in the bracket today against Kung Fu Hustle. Mm -hmm. Joey has just been insane for yeah. for check and drive rushes, for controlling space, for um. You know, constantly trying to apply reset. I, I would say that that's probably where he falls short is in the in the reset department, right? Sure, um, sure. Just constantly trying to to go for like the really tricky stuff. It just has not been working out. I swear to God, I'm not. I'm gonna wait for. <laughs> yes, all right. I was gonna say I'm gonna wait for Kevin to join it. Uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Reset. Grand finals. Reset. Shin. Grand finals. Mm-hmm. Joey with the fastest reset. I don't know. What do you feel? Dude. What are you feeling right now, Mustafeles, after seeing Joey with a performance like this I mean, uh, against Duel Kevin? The thing that is really standing out to me is his confidence. I, I think Duel Kevin is like is such a strong player at maintaining his strategy and understanding what allows him to etch out etch it out against other players. But Joey right now seems unflappable. And when you are fighting a grappler that has confidence, that is about the scariest thing in any fighting game. So yeah, I think Duel Kevin has to figure out a way to slow it down and make these conversions work out in the way that they only can for Luke. He's got so much damage on his side and look at how this is turning around. Okay, nice. Look at, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Couldn't have been put better myself. Oh, turn no. around, but oh no, Joey is still prepared as he oh, no. responds to that drive impact with one of his own. Still a decent life lead for Duel Kevin and I, I, I really like the patient play that he started this round off with. Yeah. And I wonder if that's exactly the kind of place out he's going. Look, he's playing a little bit more deliberately, not throwing out sandblast, not trying to drive rush in. He's just trying to stand at exactly the right space and figure mm -hmm. out how he can rack on this damage. But it's Dang. very deliberate movements. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it, Seth. He's like, uh, he's locked in, in in this moment where like his life is this low and just like that saving the drive gauge to make sure he can end it with the slam dunk. Now around on the board for Duel Kevin and maybe they might turn around for him. But damn, just say, we've seen Joey do that a few times. Oh yeah, the the, the send it low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh did my we, goodness. Did we figure out that's called Degog? Degog, de yeah. Degache or whatever. However you I, pronounce it. I'm on. not French. Any French people in the chat, please correct us. I can. I that. took French in high school. I can figure this out. Let me. Let me take a look at what that move is. Ah, so you're the expert. I see. Yes. Okay. Nice, perfect parry from Dual Kevin. Spending a good amount of, you know, a respectable amount of meter to not have to fight against that scaling. And look at this from corner to corner, from town to town, disco to disco. But Joey. Super ready. Degage. Degage, yeah. Degage. <clears throat> All right. So we, yeah, again, you see, uh, you see Duel Kevin trying to slow it down with the fireballs, but ultimately all it takes is one opportunity for, look at this, one more command grab and you are dead. That is so yeah, much damage. Oh my God, the damage. He talked it out. No, oh almost, my God. He almost died. The oh no. So getting punished. Going down to Memphis. Bro, this is so huge. No, not even Memphis. He's got to stay down. Yeah, th look at how much damage it is. And that froze the burnout timer. This is such an opportunity. But he it can't did. just willy-nilly go for an errant block string that's not real. He can't go for drive impact for free. Damn, okay. but no one's got the strongest, the most durable sunglasses for it to survive a blow like that. 
Yeah, that right. Was insane. <laughs> Joey. Paid oh, extra dude. for uh, the titanium glasses. Uh huh. <laughs> Shatterproof. Uh huh. All right, Joey, man, he's taking like all of this momentum behind oh, him, this inertia, this weight. It helps out grappler players so much. What? We don't want that. No, you're you're, pre you're preaching to the choir, brother. Oh, what a I huge jump in. in. Okay. Yep, that is. Oh. You have to guess whether it's gonna be a strike or a throw. This is classic Street Fighter. Not taking okay. the medal. Dead. Doesn't even need it. He feels. I'm pretty sure Joey just decided to go for damage to. You know, steer this towards victory as fast as possible. Right, there's another one on the board. Duel Kevin has to figure out a way to slow this down. You know, I have to wonder if maybe... Because something that Joey's getting a lot of mileage out of is these drive rush cancels. Whether it's on hit or block, it's presenting him with opportunities to either cash out on more damage or set up a mix-up, which is super potent for a character like Manon. So I have to wonder if maybe uh, Dual Kevin can start trying to incorporate like the OS of DP after he sees the drive rush cancel. You know, whether it's a real block string, they're safe and nothing comes out, or if it's fake, you punish them. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. It could very well be, but... You know, Dual Kevin still, still time to. Oh my Ooh. God! What a huge whip punish! Look at the damage. I was just gonna say, Dual Kevin is still trying to find the right hit that he needs, and he found exactly. Oh, you're dead. It, but so did Joey because this is absolutely dead. Just in the yep. yellow to be able to kill. This is another game for him. Maybe six straight. He has been putting in so much work and is like on the verge of a bracket reset into a loser's finals win on grand finals side in like under 15 minutes, yeah. which is insane. It is insane. <laughs> oh, we went out. Okay. Cool, Kevin. Right. He does have a Rashid. I don't know that that's the answer, but he does have a Rashid. But does he want the Rashid this late in the game? You know, are, are he... Especially in Grand Finals Reset, are you switching characters to, like, on the last match that you have? I mean, here's the thing, right? The way that the World Warrior format works, really the only thing that you're concerned about is getting into the finals on winner's side. You still have to win that whole tournament to qualify. So what you are most concerned with is guaranteeing that you get into the winner's finals on winner's side. So what he really wants right now is just, like, a certain amount of points. It's true. It's true. And I'm sure that, you know, Dual Kevin's still pretty sitting pretty comfortably with the amount of points that he has. Um, but going into the next one, he really has got to, he's really got to like accelerate himself with as many points as possible. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just uh, glad that we get some more time to sit and, and go to the commentary screen because your hair is spectacular. Oh my like. God. I, I saw, I saw somebody in the chat hyping it up. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's about the only thing I've got going for me. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I appreciate it. <laughs> really good commentary voice, and what better place to hear you than in World Warrior Grand Finals, uh, potentially the last game of the day. All right. Okay, look, we were talking about it. How do you stop that drive rush with the DP? He's already busted it out once. Right, look at that. Super optimized. Off of a perfect parry. Oh, no. Degage. <laughs> he is not afraid. That, that's the only reason we know what that's called. Is because, yeah, because he is just willing to do it time and time and time again, and it works. It does work. <laughs> I haven't seen anyone block it so far this set. Nice. Okay, perfect parry. I see you. He's got those. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely like a... It, it's like a sign of disrespect. Or, or, or at least, you know, in the anime where the villain, you know, deflects the key blast. Yes, uh-huh. That's meant to destroy the whole planet. <laughs> like, that's what that is. Like, Dual Kevin saw that and was just like, I don't want to throw another one of those, man. <laughs> All right, patience. But this is a big turnaround from Dual Kevin. He seemed much more in control. He was able to slow down that that kind of boulder rush from, uh, from Joey. Mm-hmm. All right, patience from both of them. There's a sandblast. Just making sure he's at the right range so you know it's not either an easy, perfect... Oh, what a punish. I love that. Walking into that range to take up the space so then the overhead kick is unsafe and he gets a punish. Yeah, look at this. Dual Kevin trying to stand. Oh, nice. He was just definitely ready with the EXDPs. But, Dude, he heard me. Uh, <laughs> whoa. I wonder if that jump back was a deliberate movement away. But here we go. Ooh, dead. We're going to work. 
D-E-D, -E -D, dead. That's all she wrote, and just like that, Dual Kevin turning things around and getting a game on the board on his side. This yep, is the yep. start of maybe something beautiful, chat. Let's strap in, see if this is going to go down to game five, maybe? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, Dual Kevin took some time to go out to the character select screen to, you know, recollect a couple of times, so hopefully he's got everything that he needs to do so now. But man, Kevin... And it's important to it. note, too, that, like, throughout this entire top eight, on winners or losers... Oh, no! Okay, taking the metal there, putting himself over one bar of super gauge, and now that impending mix-up is going to be so deadly. Oh, Not quite dead. Just kind of throw. Yeah. All right, taking his turn back there, getting a little bit of space, but he's not out of the woods. Yeah, he was ready for the crosscut. This is this huge. This is such an opportunity. He cannot squander it. Nice, Shimmy. Caught a counter hit there, so you can tell Joey really wants out of this corner, and looks like Duel Kevin's just going to let him. He's going to walk him out, and he's just going to try to find the one hit to hopefully lead into a level two that might be able to do it. I'm not entirely sure if he's going to- Oh, oh my, my God, God. Not, dude. Not only did he whiff punish that, but he whiff punished stand light kick. It wasn't even a medium dog. It was yeah. stand light kick. Joey's reactions have been That insane. was so good. See, see, listen, this is why rollback is important. True, true. All right, okay. He tries again, and uh, yes, he is not letting him get away with that for I am telling you, he listened to the commentary. He's like, oh yeah, that's a thing. I forgot that I can do that. All right, patience from both of them. Neither one really wants to, uh, like, neither one of them really wants to overcommit because Joey recognizes right now, it's like, this is what I need. I do not want to give him another game and another chance to download. Oof. Yeah, it looks like... I mean, it's it's been like 30 seconds and not a lot of hits have been happening. So it's very, it's very slow pace. You know, Kevin is trying oh, his nice. best to be as surgical as possible, but oh okay. no, level one. And the side switch, the most important part about it. Okay, he's close to building level three here. One more conversion and that will do it. But if he gets Ooh. hit by a command grab, he might be dead. Oh, Level two? Is that it? That's not, not enough, Not right? it, not it, not it. Oh my, oh my God. God, that did so much joey giving him just enough rope to hang himself and when it mattered most trying to jump out of the corner he was ready converted it into the level two and shocked everybody to get the kill yeah i mean just the amount of damage that that super does catches us by surprise every single time and the amount of of checks that joey has had the amount of uh, skill that joey has shown throughout this entire bracket was just nothing to balk at it was probably one of the most impressive world warrior runs that we've seen and uh i mean like look at that coming all the way from the bottom of the side like the bottom you know uh joey making his loser side run through this whole thing uh from dual kevin who just was on a tear three yeah oh, then three two you know but just and like we, we need to touch on the fact too that like he was in close sets. It was like a battle of attrition back and forth, trying to gain advantage. And like using a character like Manon, and you, you aren't fighting like bums. You're not fighting scrub characters. He fought through a Luke. He fought through a Blanca. He fought through juries. It was like the gauntlet of top tier characters. And he paid it, like he paid his dues and it paid off in the end. I, yeah. I cannot like... But you, you talked about it. He is like such an impressive run. He earned it. Joey is the victor. And we actually see uh, J, JB in the chat. Thank you for pointing out. He etches his way into that top four because of this win. And that is so important going into the World Warrior Finals because if you are in the top four in seeding points, that means you are on winner's side. You have two opportunities in that top eight bracket to try and win, not just one. Yeah, hopefully Joey is able to, you know, cement that spot going into top four for mm -hmm. the qualifying final. But that's going to do it for us here at World Warrior Wid Mess number four. I mean, like, we had a really great bracket. This was definitely one of the more enjoyable brackets to watch, yeah. uh, I would say, out of the Midwest series. Because not only did we have, you know, a crazy run from Joey mm -hmm. and, and, like, an incredibly shaken up bracket, we had, like, the most character diversity, I think. Yeah. We had, we had uh, like, every single person that played in today's bracket actually had a different character and i think that that's kind of like you know pretty standard for the mm -hmm. midwest but um we had uh dj luke blanca jury honda lily yeah. kimberly and mano like all different yeah. characters within the top eight um with those swaps which was just incredibly impressive so i'd love to see that i'd love to see character balance especially considering that even you know uh 12 weeks later 
or, or even more mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry, like uh, like 16 weeks later, that that's mm -hmm. still the topic of the conversation uh, for Street Fighter VI. We're still seeing so much diversity in the cast um, throughout the World Warrior series, and we're going to probably see it again November 11th for mm -hmm. the Midwest number five, and hopefully once again for the finale. But Mistopheles, again, it's been, it's always awesome yeah. commentating with you, dude, and I'm Thank glad you. that we got to do it again. Me too. Me too. It's, it's always a pleasure. I think we work well together. It seemed like everybody in the chat had a good time. Even, you know, again, sticking with us through our uh our technical difficulties but again uh, before we do do hang it up i want to remind everybody november 11th that is the next world warrior event for the midwest so if you haven't signed up yet be sure to do it you don't want to miss out start.gg slash sf6 midwest you want to get that taken care of don't forget about it don't sleep on it um just make sure that you are getting your reps in because we're closing in and the final is not far off yeah the finale is mm -hmm. right there november 18th the week after week mm -hmm. five so you know, if you guys are, you know, wanting to get your points up, you know, get the money up, that's your last chance. That's your last chance. It's actually why Justica was not able to enter this week because he's out in Puerto Rico for a first attack Ooh. this weekend. So, you know, that's going to be their last set. And I know that he was, you know, I, when I talked to him during week three, uh, he was kind of like stressing about that. He was like, oh, man, I really hope that I can, I right. can get my points up in the last one. And I was like, you have to win and you have to make sure that like Flash Metroid, now Joey, CN, Dual Kevin, mm -hmm. like you got to make sure that they don't get any points so right <laughs> hopefully uh hopefully just kid is able to find his last set uh available through that one and then the finale goes in and the top four on the winner side the you know fifth through eighth on the loser side it's going to be really exciting so please if you guys can if you want to sign up for number five just get some points up for yourself just to make it uh you know give it a bang uh, make it out with the bang or even probably even um gate those top players yourself yeah. uh, sign up for uh week five start on slash sf6 midwest um be a gatekeeper from the from the mid uh, from the million dollars but um mm -hmm. yeah thank you guys for for you know tuning in for us tuning in with us but it's gonna do it from us here uh oh yeah right fgc meetups that's kind of the thing i have to talk about <laughs> fgc meetups uh, largest <laughs> FGC local in North America, in the US. So uh, November 17th is our next date. We're taking a little bit of a break after Roundhouse and after, you know, we're just getting some events out of the way and we're getting, you know, allowing other players to travel and come home to play. Uh, November 17th is our next one. We're gonna have the usual five games, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, King of Fighters, Guilty Gear Strive, and Tekken. Um, the one after that, we're gonna definitely feature Grand Blue. So hopefully you guys can uh, tune, yeah. you know, come in for that one. But there's a QR code right there, start.gg slash FTC meetups. Uh, sign up, come on by. We've got exclusive Street Fighter 6 merchandise for being a Street Fighter 6 uh, local program uh, mm -hmm. partner. Thank you to Capcom. <laughs> big ups to Capcom for allowing us uh, to be you know, a big part of that entry. So we've got posters, we got keychains. You know, we've got a lot of cool stuff that we want to just give to you guys for showing up uh, and supporting our event. So please feel more than free to sign up for the events stop on by we do a lot more than play fighting games too you know we just we just hang out like it's just one mm -hmm. big meetup it's just one big hangout people you know they have food they drink they play mahjong chess <laughs> magic the gathering you know we got a yeah. couple of players that come over there like otashi plays magic the gathering pretty regularly mm -hmm. and we also got a lot of community setups too so we got a lot of room for casuals for you guys to bring like vsav skull girls whatever you guys want so please come out to the fgc meetups we love we love it there and we love you so please and then uh, last last slide, we've got Roundhouse Tag. If you guys were in the, you know, paying attention to the Midwest uh, a couple of weekends ago, you guys definitely saw Roundhouse was, uh, you know, the huge regional that's been taking off in the Midwest for the last uh, couple of years. So we've now decided to add the sister event. It's going to be team tournament focus. So we've got singles, doubles, and uh, team exhibitions uh, in the same way that you saw the Midwest tour, the Midwest circuit happen over the last few months. It's going to be returning for Roundhouse Tag. So sign up there. It's going. The registration is going to go live uh, January first. Uh, I don't know what that short slug is going to be yet, but uh, you know, we'll we've got a lot to show you guys. Roundhouse Tag is going to be sticking around because uh, we're going to gear up for some more team-based games that's going to occur. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to, please stay tuned on that news. Sign up for Roundhouse Tag. And thank you guys for watching World Warrior Midwest number four. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully you guys had a good time. Tune in next time. Make sure to follow uh, both myself and Seth. Follow Low Kick Esports on Twitter, Twitch, all that stuff. Thank you guys so much, and we will catch you next time.